Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. It's a Canadian game. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. It's April 16, 1979, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are in Montreal for Game 1 of the Best of 7 quarterfinal series with the Montreal Canadiens. This is Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. The Canadians are led by Guy Lapointe, Larry Robinson, and Serge Savard, the big three on defense. The Leafs will try to be physical with Dave Hutchison, Tiger Williams, and Dan Maloney. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Joe Bowen, and welcome to another edition of Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. For the second year in a row, the Toronto Maple Leafs will try to get past the Montreal Canadiens, this time in the Stanley Cup quarterfinals. The Leafs dismissed the Atlanta Flames in straight games in a best-of-three preliminary round, while the first-place Canadians rested with the bye. The Leafs hope to avenge a four-game sweeping by Le Bleu Blanc Rouge last year in the playoffs. The Canadians are the three-time defending Stanley Cup champions, coached by Scotty Bowman. The custodians of the Cord Cottages tonight are Ken Dryden, the Vesna Trophy winner for the Canadians, and for the Leafs, it's acrobatic Mike Palmatier because it's April 16th, 1979, and the Maple Leafs and the Canadians are getting ready for game one of the best of seven quarterfinal series. This is Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. This portion of Leafs TV is brought to you by Canon. in early mornings you invested in the proper equipment you invested in goals and dreams you invested in moments that will last a lifetime and you invested with TD Waterhouse because we know life is an investment with great returns whether you do it yourself want someone to work with you or have us do it for you we can help TD Waterhouse wealth of experience Canadians have three players with 30 goals or more. Guy Lafleur had 52, Pierre Mondou 31, and Steve Shutt had 37. The leap offense was generated by Daryl Sittler with 36 goals and 87 points, and Lanny McDonald, who had 43 goals and 85 points. Steve Shutt became the Montreal Canadiens' first pick in 1972 after two marvelous years with the Toronto Marlboros, where he scored 133 goals. He would join the Canadians in 72-73 and be a small part of the team's Stanley Cup championship. But bigger and better things were on the horizon. Shutt would play for the Canadians over the next dozen seasons, winning the Stanley Cup four more times and scoring better than 30 goals on nine occasions, including a career high of 60 in 1976-77. In 930 NHL games, Shutt had 424 goals and 817 points and is a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame and joins us to reminisce a little bit about April 16th, 1979. Now, it's too bad you played for such a horrible hockey team. <laughs> I mean, these, I mean, it's a wonder they even made the playoffs. <laughs> it was, uh, I was uh, going through the game and I just saw that, uh, you know, all the players, and at one point in time, there was, uh, there was myself, Lemaire, Lafleur, uh, Savard, and uh, Robinson, and Dryden, all on the ice at the same time, all five Hall of Famers, not, six Hall of Famers. Not bad. Scotty Bowman behind the bench. Yeah, but who, what did he ever three other Hall of, Three other Hall of Famers hanging around. What did he ever amount to? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. this, this is a, a really a magical yeah. time for this franchise, uh, and it has had some glorious years, but uh, maybe none more so than this time period. Well, I think that that was the, uh, that was we were going for our fourth Stanley Cup. You know, everything was working uh, for us. We were an experienced team. We were used to playing under Scotty Bowman. Uh, the f uh, that year, uh, we had kind of dipped a little bit. The Islanders were coming on strong. They won 
the, uh, the league championship by, I think, one point. Uh, but you could see that that franchise was coming, but uh, you know our franchise was still pretty strong, and we had some. Uh, we really did have some great players. Now the big three on defense has talked about a great deal, and this is a team that could win uh, by outscoring you. It could win by out toughing you. It could uh, win. I don't know if that's such a word or a phrase, but being tougher than you mm -hmm. were, uh, and it could certainly win the two-one hockey games. Well, we uh, we were a team built for any kind of. Uh, any kind of style, and uh, you know, you look at this uh, at this series. Uh, the Leafs had some pretty tough guys. They had, you know, Dan Maloney, Tiger Williams, Dave Hutchinson. Uh, they had some pretty good, uh, tough players at that time, and and uh, you know, they wanted to go out and really take the body. And uh, we had guys like uh, people don't even remember. We had, uh, you know, Joe Lupien was there, mm -hmm. uh, Cam Connors, uh, you know, Yvonne Lambert, you know, all big guys. And then you have Savard Robinson. Uh, and all the big guys on defense. Uh, the the Leafs. Uh, this is the second time that you've met them in as many years. Uh, the previous year, of course, was the Lanny McDonald overtime win over the New York Islanders. Uh, this year, they have eliminated the Atlanta Flames in a, uh, a two-game series that was uh, fairly physical in Game One. So I I would imagine as you're prepared for them, it's not much different than the year before. No, it wasn't. Uh, we expected them to come out uh, hitting. Um, you know, I think that they realized that we had a little bit more talent than they did, and so they wanted to, and especially with Roger, you know, I think Roger was, uh, uh, I think people thought he was a good coach, but I think they really underestimated how great of a coach he was. And, uh, you, you know, you'll see that uh, during the course of the game, the, the real matchup uh, between Roger and Scotty, uh, they all wanted to get their, their different matchups. And uh, at, at Scotty, uh, at, really at that time, started what was, um, I guess, what he would do throughout his career was the very first game of a uh, of a series. He would just mix and mix and match and throw players out in the ice. And uh, by the end of the period, uh, uh, Roger really didn't know who to put out in the ice to to match up anybody. And who was coming or what line was next? He had no idea because there was three different guys coming in. Exactly. Track. And you know, and, and it's uh, we sit uh, doing this show after the passing of Roger Nielsen and and uh, the outpouring of support and uh, and uh, admiration for what he did. But at this particular point, you're right. He's coming from a Peterborough organization that Scotty Bowman was a part of and uh, that has produced a great deal of players and coaches. Uh, through it all, and uh, here was a guy that was on the cutting edge. I mean, uh, and and teaching some of the veterans a little bit about uh, the use of things, if nothing else, videotape. And he was not afraid to take chances. Uh, much, uh, much the same as Scotty. Uh, Scotty, you know, if you look at him throughout his career, he'd put uh, uh, players on the fence. He'd move players up forwards. He'd, uh, he was always looking for the edge, and that's the way that Roger was as well. You know, they were very. Uh, astute hockey people and uh, really dedicated themselves to the game and then the one thing you notice is all of the players had the complete trust of of the uh, of the coaches where uh, you know I know with Scotty he could say okay you're gonna go play right defense and I wouldn't question him I just go out there and play because I knew that there was some kind of a reason why he's got me there may not tell you but it, oh, of you course he wouldn't tell me was <laughs> Steve Shutt is our guest we're going to take him back to April 16th, 1979. It's game one of the Stanley Cup quarterfinal series, pitting the Maple Leafs in Montreal against the Canadians. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. The Heart and Stroke Lottery early bird deadline is fast approaching. Buy early and you could win 300 grand. With your best odds, one in three, it's easy to imagine winning. There are three grand prizes of one million dollars and millions more in exciting prizes. It's your best odds, one in three. Plus, you'll support life-saving heart and stroke research. The early bird deadline is fast approaching. For the best odds, one in three, call one 551 1111 now. Before, no coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, 
And I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. this opening game, Bruce Hood is the referee, the linesmen are Ron Finn and Gerard Gauthier, and there you see them, and I think the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to start with three defensemen, with Hutchinson going to center, we'll check that further after we look at the goaltenders for tonight's game, and there's Mike Palmett here, very brilliant goaltender of the Toronto Maple Leafs, in 19 games, Stanley Cup average over two years, 2.49. And there's Ken Bryden, 47 playoff games, an average of 2.30. So Jerry Pinder, what about Toronto starting three defensemen? Well, it looks like Boris Almy's going to center, but uh, I noticed the Canadians as well have dressed Cam Connors, who hasn't been in the lineup for a while, so it should be a very physical game. And so the opening game of this series is underway, and it's LaPointe around the net. LaPointe leading the attack for Montreal, and that pass is gobbled up by Tur Turnbull. He cleared it back. LaPointe ran into Turnbull. They started to get sticks up on each other. Now they go into the corner. Burging in there was Turnbull. And the speculation that it would be a physical display early in the game has now been substantiated. Well, certainly. Dave Hutchison is right in the middle of that. And uh, they want Hutchison out there to intimidate the Montreal Canadiens. And in turn, the Montreal Canadiens have proven that they're not going to be intimidated, Danny. So we'll have penalties. Referee Bruce Hood is indicating the way to the penalty box. And there you see Turnbull and Lapointe in the first set two. So here's the uh, altercation with Hutchison in the corner and Steve Shutt. And this is what Toronto wants to do. They want to get the Montreal. And there's Turnbull coming in. Turnbull did take a little bit of wood. The announcement is being made about the penalties. Turnbull gets four minutes and Mondu too. Twenty seconds the time of the penalties. Back it goes to Savard. There's the shot and a ricochet at an angle off Paul Matier. Now from the corner, Salming. Ganey is after him to the other side. Lanny McDonald playing it back. Now it goes to LaMare, and his shot was blocked. Here's Savard winding up for the shot, and that's blocked by defenseman Burroughs. Jacques LaMare, Danny, has gone to center ice in place of Doug Jarvis. They, they want uh, LaMare to play against Daryl Sittner all night. There's the save that Paul Matier made. On the face-off, it's back to the Canadians' line. Sittler is after Robinson, who will set it. Ganey couldn't hold it. Now McDonald into the center ice area. The Leafs circling back. Burroughs over on the other side. Ganey trying to get a loose puck. And Salming, who is the master out there for Toronto in practically every game. He got it, and finally he was cleared down into the Canadian zone. From there to Robinson. McDonald is after him. Now Ganey starting out for Montreal. He delicately dumped it off into the far corner, and it's icing called against the Canadians. 
Well, Pierre Mondu doesn't get too many penalties. He's getting too many hassles, but he got in one right there. They have served exactly a minute of their penalty time. Ian Turnbull has three minutes to go as he received the double minor. I noticed Larry Robinson take a pretty good run at one of the Maple Leafs early in the game, and uh, he sometimes sets the tempo of the game, Dick, and if he gets physical, that could settle things down quite a bit. Well, you hear people talk, Jerry. You know, they say, well, teams can check the Canadians, get physical, but with people like Robinson, Ganey in the lineup, uh, it's not that easy. No longer can you be physical and, and intimidate the Canadians. Face off in Canadians territory. Hutchison laying up along with Kenville. Now Lafleur in the corner. LaFoy comes up with it ahead to Rise Brown. He dropped it back. And the Leafs cleared in over the line. It's swinging away on the right wing and cutting through center as LaFoy is in over the lead line. Offside is Napier, number 31 on the left side. Hutchison and LaFoy had words as they skated from the corner area. And they'll have more than that, I would think, before the night is over. Yeah, Dave has had more than words with a lot of people this season. 235 minutes in penalties. His first playoff year with Toronto. Back of the net, look at it. The whistle had gone on the offside. But as Howie Meeker might say, he finished the check. <laughs> McKechnie back to Hutchison. Up on the left side. Here is Kenville to McKechnie. The shot. High, high. Not too much on it. And each team now has a shot on goal. Canadians led by Napier down on the left side. Hutchison with a piece of him, and he was knocked down by McKechnie. Coming back for Toronto. Kenville at the line. The shot, the rebound. Ellis going in. And LaPointe very coolly cleared it to the wing. Here's Napier with that great fake against Jones. Napier down on the left side, in on the left wing. Napier getting set, chopped the shot. No trouble for Paul Mateer. Hutchison. Shooting it down there. The Leafs now are short-handed. Turnbull is working on his second minor penalty. Montreal on the power play, and Lafleur gets it ahead into the center ice area. Mondu, Mondu taken out of the play by Salvig. Burroughs snapped a shot to the other side, and it's into the center ice area. No score in this game. Mondu tried to set up shot, but too far for him. And it was solving who cleared it to center. A minute and a half left in the Turnbull penalty. Now Jones takes over for Toronto. Back to Burroughs. Three minutes have gone by in the opening period. Canadians trying to get this power play into effective operation against the tenacious checking of the Toronto Maple Leafs, led by Butler and Jones. Now here's Robinson. The big defenseman cuts in on the left side. There's a pass to the bear. He whipped the shot wide. Savard working it from the line. In it goes to Mondu. He passes it back. It's gobbled up by Butler. Now Paul Mateer is getting a penalty. Is there any other penalty being called? No. I don't know. I don't think so. But pointed right at Paul Mateer. As he flattened the Canadian with the play heading up the other way, still no score. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. More than fresh breath. Icebreaker's Cool Mint. A state of mouth. comes to our camp, they discover a lot about themselves. And what they learn here will stick with them for the rest of their lives. On Wednesday, June 3rd, Camp Day, buy a coffee and set things in motion. Help send a kid to camp. Tim Horton Children's Foundation, where kids discover their best. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey you can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports. 
your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Butler is serving the Palmateer penalty. Now Burroughs shoots it down the ice on the power play for Montreal. LeVair who is going back after the puck along with LaPointe, LaVair and LaFleur. Gainey and Jones solving and Burroughs defending for the Toronto Maple Leafs into the corner. Gainey is in there to get it off the boards. Back it comes to LaPointe. LaPointe takes a look. Now will it go to LaFleur? It does. Here's LaFleur. Right in front of LaVair. He fired it. And that went off a leg. Why? There is a pile up of players in front. Here's LaMare working in, getting it back to LaPointe. There's the shot. He whipped the shot wide. Canadians still in position. Here is Gainey. Gainey over it goes to the other side to LaPointe into LaMare. LaMare takes the look. Back to LaPointe going in for the shot. Stopped by Jones. Here's LaMare. Back to Gainey. One player is back on. Gainey over. He scores! LaPointe! And the Leafs are really upset because Hood was going to call another penalty there, Jerry, and I think possibly another one of Palmateer, who was really involved with Lambert and Burroughs out in front of him. Well, it's just unbelievable. Here's a replay of the goal, and uh, Bob Gainey makes a heck of a play to Gila Point on this this particular pass and it's, it's a, just a low shot in the corner but previous to this it was unbelievable the work that Lambert was doing in front of the net with Dave Burrows and Boreas Salmi here we're going to maybe get a little bit of a look at it here now that's the goal again but he stood in front of that net and took several good he shots from Salmi and Burrows and that's one of the keys he had those defensemen so angry with him that they probably weren't playing the puck Boyd gets the goal the Canadians were firing actually the Leafs I thought had done a pretty good job of preventing the shots from going in they're going to have a correction here on the announcement, so I don't know what's happening here unless somebody touched it. Now, there you see Paul Matier. Now, there's Hood at the top of the screen about to signal a penalty. It was, I think, on Paul Matier. The Canadians had the puck, maintained possession, and the goal went in. Well, now we get a discussion. We're going to get a penalty called here. They've put another penalty up against Toronto on the board, but we will wait. It's 1-0 Montreal. Hold on, fellas. The goal doesn't count. The goal doesn't count. The goal is disallowed. The play had been whistled dead. We couldn't hear the whistle up here. You saw on the replay how Hood raised his arm. Everybody cheered. The Canadians came off the bench. I haven't paying attention to the fact that the scoreboard still shows nothing, nothing. So Paul Matier still has a minute left in his first penalty. Has now drawn another one. And now the announcement is made that the goal does not count. Well, well. <laughs> well, the referee is uh, obviously given Lambert an interference penalty for being in front of the net, and that also was a good call. That's it, Jerry. Right on, Lambert with the interference call. So there's no score in the hockey game. Lemaire getting it over to LaPointe into the center ice area. LaPointe giving it to Lemaire ahead to LaPointe into the center ice area to LaFleur, a drop pass to LaPointe. Here's LaPointe taking the look over to LaMaire. He fired and he grazed the goal post. And it's cleared down the ice by Jones. Jones number 16, a very pesky hockey player, an excellent penalty killer. And he is in that role now. He's the only player up front for Toronto with solving and Turner Turnbull on defense. Now on the left side, LaPointe clearing it in. Turnbull in on the boards. Solving takes a look and he fired it down the ice. So there's no score in the hockey game, although the puck is fired into the net by LaPointe. So there's no argument by the Canadians because penalties were being assessed. Now it's LaPointe in over the line. He gives it to Robinson. Robinson faked the shot. They're playing five aside now. It's off the leg. Here's Jones coming out over the line. Takes the long shot. Butler is on the ice for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the Leafs are making changes while the play goes on. LaFleur's pass is stopped by Maloney. 
Robinson with the head fake, hits the Tarava line, in on the left side, trying to clear it, it's off a leg, and it's back into the center ice area. Long there, and the Paul McKeer penalty, is actually 19 seconds left. Into the corner, here is Ganey, he missed it. And it is called for icing. This is Stanley Cup 79 from the Forum in Montreal. invested in early mornings you invested in the proper equipment you invested in goals and dreams you invested in moments that will last a lifetime and you invested with TD Waterhouse because we know life is an investment with great returns whether you do it yourself want someone to work with you or have us do it for you we can help TD Waterhouse wealth of experience before, no coward. After, no coward. <laughs> no coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30, Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. Lining up for the face-off, and they're out of territory. Each team has three shots on goal. We have Risebrow against McKechnie. Are they going to be waved out of there? No, the face-off finally goes to Kenville. Here's Kenville gathering speed out over the line into the center ice area, pass for Maloney on the other side. And finally, it's called on the offside at the Canadiens' line. 13-37 left of the opening period. Pierre LaRouche of the Canadiens, not in uniform tonight. He hasn't been for, well, he missed the last 10 games or so of the regular season. He is one of the Canadiens' extra men. Now we have three seconds left in the penalty. And then the teams will be back at a full complement of a half dozen. How long that will last, time will tell. Now here's Hutchinson clearing it. It's off the stick of Lombert over the glass. We see that uh, the Canadians have dressed Cam Connor tonight for the first time in uh, several weeks. And I think that's an indication that Scotty Bowman is, is anticipating a very rough game. Connor played only 23 games all year, Jerry, for Montreal. Trombley cleared it to the right side. Kenville. Up it goes. McKechnie chasing after it. Engblom cleared it out over the line. Here's the point. Flicking it into the corner. Lombert moving in. Bumped rather gently by McDonald. Now the puck is knocked into the center ice area. Engblom firing it back in. Trombley, right on. Lombert moved in. Interference call against the Toronto Maple Leafs. So Maloney off for a defense at 7.01 into the opening period. And again, Montreal with an opportunity to apply the power play. Mondu, Lafleur, Shutt, Robinson, and Lapointe. Jones, as usual, is out there again for Toronto. They do not execute that face-off fairly. Let's pick up the other lead players, Salming, Burroughs, and Butler. From the face-off, it's behind the net. Salming is going after it. He prevails, clears it down the ice. And what a tower of power number 21 is for the Toronto Maple Leafs when he's on the ice. And he seems to be on the ice all the time. <laughs> Salming. Now the Canadians starting out. Robinson over to Lafleur into the center ice area at the Toronto line. 
Over it goes. Bondu puts on the brakes, gives it to Lafleur. Here's Lapointe. A shot. Palmatier grabbed it at his eye on that all the way. Jerry, one thing that all of these penalties uh, is bringing about, as far as Toronto is concerned, as we look at Mike Palmatier, who's drawn two of them. People like La Dan Dan Lanny McDonald get it right yet, and Daryl Sittler hasn't seen much action. They're going to be right. awfully fresh by the time they finally get around to playing six aside. A minute and 27 seconds left in the penalty. Salming, falling, clearing it. Shut us after it back to Lafleur over the other side. There's a shot. It hit Robinson in front. Now Lapointe takes a shot. It's off a leg. Fierce action in front of Paul Mateer between Burroughs and Robinson. Now the Canadians losing it, and it's knocked down the ice by Butler. Lapointe. Almost got hit with that. He just ducked in time. The fur out over the line. Ganey has it. He hits the Toronto line. Here's Ganey going in a goal. He shoots and Paul Mateer comes up with a sparkling move to get in front of it. Into the corner. Lambert behind the net to Ganey. Back it goes to Lafleur. He fakes the shot. Gives it to Lemaire. A shot. Stopped by Salming. A pile up. They fight for it in front. And McKechnie comes up with it for the Leafs and cleared it down the ice. Exactly 28 seconds left in the Maloney penalty of the Canadians in their own zone. They can't get anywhere against McKechnie. Now Lapointe starting out over the line, leading a wave of four Canadians to center, shooting it in. A dozen seconds left in the penalty. McKechnie is shoved by Lambert and Hutchinson shooting it down the ice. Now that penalty has expired, and the Toronto Maple Leafs certainly have defended well on the occasions they have been shorthanded, and it has been frequent in this opening period. Now Hutchison playing it to Williams. He cleared it to an open left wing. Savard is back for it. No score in this hockey game. Pass into the center ice area. McDonald has it at his own line. Ray Jan Ull picks it up, brings it in, and Risebra had not succeeded in getting out over the leaf line. Now, Scotty Bowman's trying to coach his team to their fourth straight Stanley Cup. We asked him what kind of a series he expects the Canadians and the Leafs. It's always difficult, I think, to predict the outcome or predict what type of series might be played. I think uh, traditionally the Toronto and Montreal series have been very emotional and uh, have provided uh, some very good hockey and uh, this is I think what everyone is expecting. The Toronto Maple Leafs on that great wrist shot by Lanny McDonald and Scotty Bowman had taken over from us on the play by play. We didn't send him in. But anyway McDonald came in and a typical Lanny McDonald here it is. He can shoot that beautifully that wrist shot. Well, well, he, he just something. let one fly, Dick. There we see it again. And Engblom didn't get too close to him. But any time you give Lanny McDonald time to shoot, he's a very dangerous hockey player. Well, I told you he'd be arrested when he finally got out of the ice after all of those penalties. Well, McDonald from Settler, that well-known Toronto firm. Nine thirty-six on the Toronto Maple Leafs in front, one to nothing. No, Jerry, that was really the first good scoring chance the Leafs had had. The Canadians had outshot them to that point, five-three. But really, the three shots, as we look at Sittler taking a run at Brian Engblom, the three shots the Leafs had, I think, were pretty well all from well out. Yes, that was the first decent scoring right. opportunity they had. And there, we, as we see a replay of Sittler again, like they're trying to take everybody they can get their hands on. Now Turnbull clearing it into the corner. Savard in there. After him is Sittler. The Leafs moving in. Now they fall back with the Canadians coming out. A long left wing pass. Shot has to stop. He gives it back to Mondu. McDonald trying to get a piece of him. And all he got was Mondu's stick. Into the corner on the boards. McDonald out on the right side. Mondu got a piece of him. Robinson hit McDonald. And a penalty coming up. Let's see, I think Boutet might get a penalty for taking a run at Lafleur after Robinson was being signaled for a penalty 
When he hit McDonald, it's going to take a lot of sorting out tonight when we figure out who's being penalized for what. Well, I hope we get a replay of that check by Larry Robinson because he really laid it on Lanny McDonald. Uh, there it is. No, no well, this, this is, is how it all check. starts. Hutchison against uh, Mondu. Okay, I think we're going to get a... There's Lanny McDonald taking a run at Mondu. <laughs> now, here comes the check by Larry Robinson, I think. There it is. A pretty solid check by a big man. And then Boutet later on down the ice. That's just as all of that was coming to an end. Took a real run at Guy Lafleur and knocked him down. So there is Boutet in the visitor side of the penalty box. And there is Larry Robinson in the home side of the penalty box. The Canadians were the least penalized team in the league again this year. But they are going to have their hands full, I guess, from in the penalty department here against the Leafs. The rundown on the penalties. Toronto has picked up six minors. Montreal a three. And the Leafs with the important statistic in the game. Toronto leading one to nothing. McKechnie over on the right side to Sal Ming. He's over the line. Fires the shot. Dryden didn't know where exactly that had gone. He looked behind him. Now it's Lafleur out over the line into the center ice area. Takes the long shot. Palmatier with that great reflex action. Got it off his leg over the glass. With the score, the Maple Leafs won. The Canadians nothing. This is Stanley Cup 79. Did we go back in time and space? Look! T-Rex, the bumbling idiot of the dinosaur world. Obviously, this is between you and him. All right, you and I don't like each other. Only one will remain. Welcome to the Big Bang Theory. Oh, that blows. Land of the Lost. I have never done this before, and I am good. Start the Friday. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. kid comes to our camp, they discover a lot about themselves. And what they learn here will stick with them for the rest of their lives. On Wednesday, June 3rd, Camp Day, buy a coffee and set things in motion. Help send a kid to camp. Tim Horton Children's Foundation, where kids discover their best. Lanny McDonald has scored for Toronto. Ian Turnbull and Daryl Sittler have drawn the assist at 9.36 in period number one of game one of the Stanley Cup quarterfinal series in Montreal. Steve Shutt is our guest. And uh, Stevie, uh, playing the Maple Leafs and having been a, a Marlboro junior, uh, mean a little more to you, a little different? Well, it was always a thrill to come back to Maple Leaf, Gar Maple Leaf Gardens and, uh, you know, in front of all your family and fans and, and also, uh, growing up playing with the Marlies, you know, all the way up from Pee Wee, uh, it was just a thrill to come back to Maple Leaf Gardens and play. And I know that if you go down our, our roster, you'll see that um, probably half the players are from the Toronto region, so it was a big thrill for them as well. Now, Steve, the other thing is, in the old days, of course, it was the feeder system. Yep. And it was, uh, and I think the Leafs would have benefited greatly uh, from uh, Gardner, Shutt, and uh, Harris to uh, all be on uh, the same team. It would have uh, obviously, because that, that was a tremendous yeah. junior line. Yeah, we had a, it was a great line, and uh, it was very, uh, uh, you know, it was sad when, you, when we broke up the line. Actually, we got drafted by the WHA team in New York. And, and should it, have all gone. And it never, never happened, though, but it would have been interesting. Now, you don't win a Memorial Cup because somebody named Nielsen is coaching the Peterborough Peets. That's right, so I owe him big time. <laughs> so... <laughs> He crushed my dream. Well, that, and mm -hmm. then the next year, the Marlies did win yeah. the Memorial Cup. And then they came back with, uh, with a lot of the players that are playing in, the, in tonight's game, uh, played with the Marlies and won the Memorial Cup. Now, uh, the, uh, the idea of uh, this team, the Canadians, uh, how good they were playing, 
uh, has reflected in what other people have thought of them in their careers yeah. after hockey because there is a great deal of management and coaching types with their blades on in this game. Well, it's interesting, and uh, when you watch the game, uh, just look at our team and how many of the players really went into management, coaching, uh, scouting, but really stayed involved in the game. And, and that's a real uh, uh, attribute, I guess, to you know Sam Pollock, Scotty Bowman, uh, because they taught us the game. And not only did they just te teach us how to play our position, but they actually taught us the whole game. And uh, it's been really interesting to see where all of these players have gone uh, and really gone throughout the NHL and put their stamp uh, of the Canadian system maybe on the, in the, the NHL. It's a tribute, obviously. Uh, Sad Sam, uh, Sammy Pollock, uh, was the architect of these, these great teams. What was he like? Uh, Sam was very intense. And, uh, you know, Sam didn't joke that much, but neither did Scotty, but uh, he always had the best people. He, he had the best players, but he also had the best people involved. Uh, you know, not only did he have Scotty Bowman, he had Cliff Fletcher, he had Ron Caron. Uh, you know, he had a staff of, 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 of people in his front office that were extremely dedicated uh, to the game and really dedicated to the team. It wasn't by accident. Uh, that he built dynasties. Now this may be a loaded question and I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, it was a time when Sam Pollock went after the best people. Not necessarily the best francophone people because he was playing in Montreal in a cultured area that obviously uh, had, had to have a, a francophone overtone to it. Well but uh, don't forget uh, Sam in his infinite wisdom and I still don't, to this day don't know how he did it uh, went to the NHL and said, look at guys, you know, we've got this, this situation, we have a lot of francophones, so I should get the first two draft picks, francophone draft picks. And uh, the rest of the NHL said, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's really... Sounds that's like sound a heck of an idea. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, if the year that they stopped it, if they would have had one more year, he would have got Gilbert Perot and Marcel Dion. So, uh, you know, like Sam was no dummy, and, and, uh, but he had all these French-Canadian players coming in. Um, and, uh, you know, there were some great players coming out at that time. All right. Well, it is 1-0 Toronto, Game 1. The Leafs and the Canadians in the Stanley Cup quarterfinal. Let's go back upstairs to the booth. Face off in Toronto territory. Teams playing five aside. Technia against Lemire. The Leafs get the draw. Lemire in there to pick it up. Couldn't get it back. He lost it to McKechnie. Williams, a pass on the right side. Turnbull is digging in there against the bar. They go to the corner. Williams trying to pick it up. He passed it back. Solming, working from the corner. Solming trying to get in front. And a low shot just wide. Great work by Solming off the boards. Now McKechnie ahead to the Toronto defenseman again. Cleared in. Turnbull at the point. Takes a shot. It goes off the point. LaFleur can't get out. And the Leafs doing a great job here of hemming the Canadians in. McKechnie doing the four checking along with Williams. Now they fall back. LaFleur ahead to Lemaire. Lemaire tried to get through there. He was bowled over by Salming and Turnbull. McKechnie over the line. Williams getting in front. The shot off the stick. Williams into the corner. Now Ganey whipped the pass over into the center ice area to Ool. Ool with the point. It dropped pass to LaPointe. LaPointe center again. And the pass was high and went off to the corner. Leafs clearing it down on the right side. 20 seconds left in the final knees. In on the wing comes Rayshan Ool trying to get it in front. Here's Engblom. They fight for it in behind the Toronto goal. And the face-off about to take place. Now Bowman is sending out Rise Brow. Scoring play in the hockey game. McDonald, his first playoff goal this year. Turnbull and Sittler assisting. One to nothing. Sittler against Risebrow. At least that was the situation. Now it's McDonald against number eight of the Canadians. 
Ganey on the left point and LaPointe on the other side. They are out of your picture. Now it's back to Ganey. It hopped over his stick, goes into the center ice area. Penalized players are now back on. Kenville takes over. Cleared it up on the right wing to center. Here is Sippler over the line, making the moves, dropping it back. Boutet is chasing it into the corner. Sittler trying to center it off the board. Watch McDonald. There's the shot. He didn't get too much on it. It was to the side of the net. Canadians led by Rajan Ula ahead to Ganey. Ganey into that center ice area. Long shot picked off gracefully and coolly by Paul Matier. Sittler laying it back into the center ice area. Canadians making changes now while the play goes on. A shot in by Risebrow. Got going in, Paul Matier. Got it to McDonald, ahead to center. It's whipped back in by Mondu. Lafleur going in. Lafleur trying to get possession. He was ridden out of the play by Burroughs. Now here's Anderson. He's a nifty skater. Anderson out over the line. Going after Mondu, chasing him back into Canadians' territory. Here's Burroughs backhanding it in. Chartra missed it and it's called on the offside. Lafleur, Mondu, and Shutt, still the attacking line for the Canadians. Jones, there you see him, 16, he's at center. Butler on one wing and Boutet on the other. Leafs one, Canadians no score, moving into the final five minutes of the opening period. Dryden stopping it. Now Chartra. Chartra on the right side to Mondu. Coming down with shot. It's cleared into the corner. Paul Matier golf it. It hits shot. Shot trying to center it. It's cleared off Jones' a stick. In among the spectators. Jerry, we talked about Mike Paul Matier before the game. You look at the McDonald goal. You look at Jerry Butler of the Leafs. Just prior to that, Paul Matier made a big stop off Bob Ganey, who had made a fine play, split the defense. Paul Matier made the save. There he is, making like Tony Perez or whoever. <laughs> Well, as I mentioned earlier, if the Leafs are to have any chance against the Montreal Canadiens, they need a big, big performance out of Mike Palmatier. Well, Palmatier came to the Leafs from Dallas three years ago. He met general manager Jim Gregory. He said, your goaltending problems have just been solved. <laughs> that proved to be a fact and not an idle boast. 25-year-old native of Toronto, he has been sensational with the Leafs. 5'9", 155 pounds. Canadians, everybody up for the face-off. Salming against Lambert. Salming working it on the side. It's whipped back in and now out into the center ice area. Chartra gives it to Robinson. Robinson shooting it in. Trombley going in. He's bumping with Boutet. Boutet takes over. Now it's to the side of the net. Turnbull with Lambert after him. They go into the boards. And Boutet going back in there to check Trombley. They may start something. Well, I'll tell you, Jerry, you can talk about your Lafleurs and Sittlers and McDonald's, but you have to wonder if this sort of thing keeps going, if the boys in the trenches aren't the ones who are going to decide. And now we've got a bit of a wrestling match going on. Rick Chartrand, and I think it's Jimmy, Jimmy Jones, Jones, it is. That's a mismatch, too. And you have to give the Toronto Maple Leafs credit. They've got a game plan and they intend to stick to it, but I'm just not so sure that it's the right game plan to beat the Montreal Canadiens because, as we've mentioned time and again, the Montreal Canadiens have a very physical hockey club. In the interview that I pre-recorded with Daryl Sittler, he has some interesting comments to make as to what might happen if the series gets a little physical. And I think some very sensible comments, too. Well, Pat Boutet, I noticed earlier uh, in the shift when he was playing against Guy Lafleur, was covering him just like a shadow. Every move Lafleur made, even even hanging back deep in the Montreal zone, Boutet was right there with him. So they're obviously not going to give him much breathing room in this series. I'm mentioning what the penalties are doing to the Leafs personnel-wise. Oh, here we go now. Boutet and Tremblay. You know, Jerry, you could count the fingers of one hand the number of fights the Canadians had in this building in the regular season. Here we are in the first period of this series, and we've got this sort of thing going on. Well, they're letting them go at it here. It looks like they're going to break them up now. But this is something that Toronto really didn't have to face against Atlanta. And if they're going to hit game in and game out against the Montreal Canadiens, then they're going to have to fight game in and game out. And that's not a very good prospect to look at when you've got seven games to go. It's a very tiring way to play the game. These are the two who started that whole thing. 
And they sort of had a bit of a confrontation and nothing happened then. Chartra and Jones get in on the act. And then they decided to come up with part two. So there you have Trombley being convoyed to the penalty box. You notice when the scrapping and whatnot is going on that not too many people really walk up to Larry Robinson and drop their gloves and say, let's go. And I think that's an indication of really how strong the Montreal Canadiens are. Minute pour s'être battu. Le temps des punitions, 14 minutes. Well, here's how it all began as we listen to the penalties. So, Danny, they will play five aside. The major penalties went to Tremblay and Boutet, but the minors, Chartra and Jones, that's why they'll play five aside. So the Chartra jones situation, the only one showing on the penalty clock. Toronto Maple Leafs won. Montreal Canadiens no score. McDonald from Turnbull and Settler. Face off in Toronto territory. Salming with that feathery pass to the left wing, back to Salming over the other side to Burroughs. He knifed it down into Canadians territory, Sittler against Savard, Savard to Lapointe. Lapointe with Lafleur, Lafleur on the right side. Lafleur putting on the brakes over on this side is Savard, but it goes to Ganey. There's the shot. Almatier getting his leg on it. Over on the far side of pass intercepted. Here's a break for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Sittler going in, and it is offside. <laughs> I tell you, he went. He was going to argue that, Jerry, the instant the whistle went, but thought better of it and didn't say all that much. Well, there's no the doubt that it, it was a good call by the referee. And that's interesting in the line matchups tonight. Just that shot from Ganey that came in. Paul Mateer oh, doing the splits. He's made several good saves. Bruins now leading. Pittsburgh, 4-1. to one. They're in the second period. Marcotte with his second goal. Kindrichuk scored for the Penguins. Five minutes and 13 seconds left in the opening period. And it's been a long first period from the point of view of consumption of time because there has been a lot of extracurricular activity and visits to the penalty box. Now, it's Ull going in there. Ull trying to come up with it. He lost it. Relieves three of them into the center ice area. Sittler. Back it goes. Solving couldn't get the shot away, and then he was checked by LaPointe. Savard over on the far side for Lemaire. He hits the Toronto line, winds up. It's blocked. Recovered by Ull. Over to LaPointe into the corner, and Turnbull takes over for Toronto. Turnbull leaving it for McDonald. Solving. Into the center ice area, Turnbull's pass goes sliding off to the corner. Dryden for Lafleur. Now Toronto making changes while the play goes on. Lafleur coming out into the center ice area, clears it in, races in after it along with Lemaire. Hutchison there to cover up for Toronto, having difficulty against Lemaire. They tie each other up. Here's Lafleur. Back it goes to Robinson, over to Englund. There's the shot, Lafleur waiting for and he fired it wide to the open side. What a glorious scoring opportunity there for the Montreal Canadiens. Penalized players are back on. Here's Mondu giving it to Englund, stopped by Jones. He cleared it into Canadiens territory. A wholesale change now for Toronto. Robinson down on the right side, hits the Toronto line. Robinson playing it back. Williams gets rid of it and rolls it down to the Canadian zone. And still buzzing about that setup for Lafleur in front. Now Butler and shots start jostling inside the Toronto line, but nothing develops, thank goodness. Danny, a couple of off-ice notes about the Canadians. Larry Robinson has shaved his beard, and Ken Dryden has got rid of his mustache. And Wayne Merrick has scored for the Islanders, and they lead Chicago 1-0 at the end of the first period. And it's a close shave here <laughs> in the first <laughs> period. He'd say that. 1-0. Now in on the boards, and they get a whistle. The shots on goal are 8-5, Montreal leading. And I suppose the differential there could be attributed to the advantage that Montreal had on the penalties. 
they have had more power plays than Toronto. Cam Connor hasn't seen action since I believe it was last March 12th, and we haven't seen him tonight, but I think if the rough play continues, uh, Scotty Bowman's definitely going to have him out on the ice. Engblom firing it to the other side. Here's Risebrow with Lombard and Napier. Failed to penetrate against Turnbull. Leafs coming back. Maloney going in. And he was checked just as he was getting ready to take a good shot. Risebrow's pass goes off a stick. There's could be an offside here, no. The Leafs get out. Anderson fails to hold the pass. Salming up for Maloney with Anderson and McKechnie. Canadians turning on the left side. Engblom after Risebrow. Risebrow over the line. Puck is left there. It's rolled in and finally Turnbull. Ahead to Anderson on the right side across the Montreal line. Anderson. Trying to get in behind Engblom and center right out in front. And it was a bouncing puck, and Maloney couldn't get it onto the target. Lapointe. Now it's Napier ahead to Risebrow. Two minutes left in this opening period. Salming leading a four man Toronto attack on the right side, and he shovels that one in knee high. Lapointe on the corner ahead to Lemaire. Shot moving down on the play. Over the line. Offside. Shot. Well, last week in Montreal, Doug Smith died. Doug, for eight years, was the English voice of the Montreal Canadiens, and no one has ever brought greater dedication, knowledge, preparation, and excitement to hockey broadcasts. Doug was a big fellow physically. He was a giant professionally. But to his family, we extend an expression of genuine sympathy. Right from this catwalk, starting in 44, Doug had the opportunity to do that Canadian's victory in the Stanley Cup playoffs against the Hawks when Pro Blake scored in overtime. Canadians were behind in that game 4-1, and the fans started to say fake. And then they went on to win. Doug was there. Salmi. Clearing it to the far side. Lemaire along the boards. Jones pokes it into the center ice area. Robinson, a head man pass. Lemaire was tied up by Burroughs. The puck loose in front and finally is poked out on the right side. Robinson back for the Canadians with one minute left in the period. Toronto Maple Leafs on the Lanny McDonald goal, leading one to nothing, and there's an offside called against the Canadian. Scotty Bowman seems quite content to have the Guy Lafleur line play against Jimmy Jones, Butler, and Boutet, but what he does want is to have Jacques Lemaire out there against Daryl Sintner, I believe, in the absence of Dougie Jarvis. And there we see Dave Burroughs. He's now going to go over to the Leafs bench. I wish somebody would put the watch on Salming. I'll bet he's been out there for 15 minutes in this period. Well, they say he played almost the whole third period, 17 minutes of the third period in, in the first game in Atlanta when those players got kicked out of the game, and uh, that's a great asset when a guy like that can log ice time. Now Turnbull. Up it goes finally to Sittler. Maloney going in after it, driving out of the net, and he finally stuck his stick out and deflected that shot. Canadians clearing it into the center ice area. Solving a back for Maloney. Into the corner. Rejean Oul gathering speed coming out. There's the pass. Nowhere near Mondu. Pouncing on it is Turnbull to Solming. Solming shooting it back into the center ice area. And it's Savard. Over on the other side to LaPointe. Just a dozen seconds left now in the opening period. The Canadians with the final rush. There's a pass to the line. Broken up once again by that strong Toronto defense. LaPointe back after it. And that's going to be the end of the first period. Canadians outshot Toronto 8-6. to six, But the Toronto Maple Leafs got the only goal. McDonald from Turnbull and Sittler. The time was 9.36. So the score at the end of one period, Toronto won, Montreal no score. This is Wendell Clark. I'm inviting you to join me at the Baysell Heart and Stroke Ride for Heart on Sunday, June 7th. This is your only chance to cycle traffic free on the DVP and fundraise for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Each year, one in three Canadian deaths are due to heart disease and stroke. 
It can strike anyone at any age. Support the Heart and Stroke Foundation today and invest in our health for tomorrow. So who are you riding for? I'm riding for my mom. Register and fundraise now at rideforheart.ca. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Into the first period, the Maple Leafs with a one to nothing lead, and Dick Irvin is standing by with lead captain Daryl Sittler. It is indeed a pleasure for me to be talking right now with the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Daryl Sittler, who was in this same position almost a year ago, but Daryl, a different situation now. You fellas have to be in better shape physically and mentally than you were when you played the Canadians after that Islanders series a year ago. Well, that's definitely uh, true. We have Boyer playing this right. year. He that's was out last year, and Lanny was playing with a broken wrist, and I had a bad knee, and I don't know. We Emotionally, we were drained after the Islanders series. This year, uh, you know, we, we've had three or four days rest after beating Atlanta out, and uh, we're looking forward to get going. You just said what might be a key word, it seems. Scotty Bowman said to me yesterday, he feels this will turn into an emotional series. You agree? Well, I think so. I think uh, probably every fan across Canada loves to see Toronto-Montreal play because of the rivalry in the past years, and uh, I think the players feel a little of that too, you know. Everybody gets in on the act. Can you see it, uh, Daryl, becoming a physical series, if not right off the bat uh, as it goes along? Well, I think maybe physical to the extent of a lot of hard hitting. You know, uh, Montreal has some hard hitters in Ganey and Robinson, and uh, definitely our style is to, to play a hitting style. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get into uh, Downey Brooks and Brawls. Uh, you know, no player likes to see that, and uh, we're not intending to play that way either. We're just going to play hard hitting, and sometimes when there are a lot of hard hits and, and, and it shifts, uh, the emotions do run high, and. Uh, uh, fights break out, but, uh, you know, that's not our game plan. Daryl, the Canadians playing them this past season, has, did you notice anything different than playing them the previous couple of years, for example? Any different to play against? Well, I don't think so. I, I think what has happened, uh, everybody looks at Canadians' records this year, maybe it's not as good as other years, but I think a lot of teams around the league have improved a lot, mm -hmm. and including the Leafs. You know, we have Dave Burroughs this year, and uh, guys like Paul Gardner, and guys like that helping us, and, uh, you know, it's difficult to stay on top. Uh, you know, guys like Serge Savard and Guy Lapointe are getting a little older and, uh, you know, maybe they, they find it a little more difficult and uh, I don't know. Uh, You'd like to see how difficult it is though to stay on top, wouldn't you? Well, <laughs> find out for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, they have three in a row and I'm sure they're looking forward to, to winning four in a row and uh, we're looking forward to knocking them off. So. Darrell, how important is home ice advantage at playoff time? Well, I think for our team, uh, really there's not a, a whole lot of uh, advantage for us because we've had a good record on the road all during the season. Uh, we have the, the type of team that uh, has great character and we play well on the road. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, throughout the season our fans were a little disenchanted with us. You know, they booed us a lot in Toronto and uh, I think a lot of the players felt a lot of pressure playing in Toronto and they seemed to play more relaxed on the road. And We were happy to start the series off in Atlanta. Uh, uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the home team to win at home and uh, you know, see what happens here tonight. Daryl, thank you very much. Great series against Atlanta. Best of luck. Thank you. Steve Shutt of the Canadians is our guest, and uh, the Leafs have taken the lead in the first period. Lanny McDonald and Daryl Sittler are, uh, well, that's uh, Shutt and uh, Lafleur, and uh, the, those people, tandems together work well, and certainly McDonald and Sittler worked very well in Toronto in their tenure. Here. Well, certainly for years, and uh, they are always the player to uh, players to watch. Uh, Tiger Williams was, is in the lineup and, and I, he was just starting to come into the lineup and he, I don't think he was right on their line yet, uh, but he was going to certainly be a contributing factor uh, to their line, but uh, they certainly were the big gunners uh, when we played against them. Uh, you know, Scotty wanted to have Bob Ganey against, uh, against Lanny 
but he also, he was one of the, th the few coaches that wanted to start matching up defensemen to the forwards. And if you, if you watch the game, a lot of times you're going to see it's either Larry is out there or, or Serge uh, against that big line. What, what kind of problems did Daryl Sittler present to a team? Um, a lot of problems because you know he could do it all. Uh, you know a lot of people don't realize that he was probably uh, one of the toughest Leafs as well. So you couldn't intimidate him. Uh, he, he was certainly a, a great offensive player, uh, a good two-way player and hard-nosed player. And uh, you know he gave it as good as he took it. So you knew that uh, when. Uh, you're going to play against him, uh, that you're going to be in for a physical game. Well, the Leafs have the lead, one to nothing, and Sittler has set up Lanny McDonald along with Ian Turnbull, and after one, it is one nothing Leafs. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. Before Noel Coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. It is 1-0 Toronto, Game 1. The Leafs and the Canadians in the Stanley Cup quarterfinal. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. When a kid comes to our camp, they discover a lot about themselves. And what they learn here will stick with them for the rest of their lives. On Wednesday, June 3rd, Camp Day, buy a coffee and set things in motion. Help send a kid to camp. Tim Horton Children's Foundation, where kids discover their best. Pride, excitement, style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. As I mentioned at the top of the show, this team has a, a tremendous playoff record. They seem to be a different hockey club once they see that uh, trail of the Stanley Cup beginning. Well, Jim Gregory and Roger Nielsen, as I mentioned, deserve a lot of credit because they put together a team of players with an awful lot of character. So Salming was back there, a final few words with his goalie. Roger Nielsen, coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. 
So the second period is underway and Burroughs slides it over to Soming. He flicked it in over the Canadians' line. Savard couldn't clear it. Robinson starting into the center ice area. Robinson ahead for Lemaire. And Butler cleared it out. Now the puck back in over the Toronto line. We have Lemaire, Shutt, and Lafleur for Montreal. Jones, Butler, and Boutet for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They fight for possession. Now it comes around the boards to the other side. Boutet clearing it. Finally, Robinson took Savard's pass. Here's Salming intercepting. He just gets rid of it and dumps it into the Canadian zone. So they are starting this period rather cautiously. One to nothing, Toronto in front. Robinson dumped his man, Boutet, knocked him to the ice in the Canadian zone. Buck was cleared down the ice. That brought a, a mild reaction from the fans. Now here's McDonald turning at the Toronto line. Taking his time, cruising to the right side. He scoops it in. Williams going in along with Sittler to join McDonald. And the Canadians start out. Here's Risebaugh down on the left side to Ganey. He chopped a shot wide. Chartraw moving in against Turnbull. Shot wide by Risebrow. Hutchison to the other side. Risebrow getting it back to Englund. There's the shot, and it's broken up by Hutchison into the center ice area. A back pass. Englund clearing it to Ganey. His pass off McDonald's leg. Could be a delayed offside if the Canadians don't get up, but they do. Ganey fanned on a pass. Turnbull is spun around on a Ganey check. And they're very, very cautious in the first two minutes of this second period. Here's Sittler feeding it in from the point. Williams getting it back to Turnbull. Turnbull shot off Dryden's right arm. Dryden going down that's over the glass. We see the shots there, eight to six in two minutes. In eight seconds, there hasn't been a single shot in this period, Jerry. Toronto, everybody up here could be a shot. There it is, it's blocked. Ellis tried to pick it up. Ellis around the net, takes the shot. He hit the side of the net and then he was dumped. May get a whistle, yes we do. Well, Ken Dryden early in this period has uh, been called to the task a few times and uh, I think he's important as well as Palmatier. You know, you just can't have a goalie who doesn't play well and expect to win a playoff round. Well, that's the first official shot. It's now eight to seven for Montreal. Face off is outside the Canadians line. The Leafs leading one to nothing. Robinson being watched by Maloney up on the right side to Tremblay. Over on the wing in full flight, here's Mondu across the line. Mondu hopping in there. Oh, and he made that move and lost the puck off his stick. What a brilliant individual effort that was by Mondu. Oh, a tremendous effort by Mondu. You know, he's played awfully well for the Canadians all year. And if we I think we're going to get a replay of Mondu's rush here. Watch him go around the outside of Quenville there. Just lost the puck at the last minute, and again, Paul Matier challenged him and made the play. Now Montreal, everybody up for the face-off. From the draw, back to Savard. Tried to hit Robinson with him. He couldn't. Now McKechnie against Lambert. A pass by Bondu, and it goes down over the line into Canadian territory. Off the boards. Here's McKechnie bringing it in for the Leafs. McKechnie on the left side, jammed into the boards by Trombley and Lambert. Mondu coming up in the play is Trombley. Here's Mondu into the corner. He falls. Trombley going after it, jostling with Kenville. Here's Robinson shooting it a low drive, wide by three or four feet. McKechnie coming down. He's in over the line, moving up as Maloney going in. He scores! Beautiful goal! On a rink-wide pass from McKechnie to Maloney, and Maloney came in there beautifully. Boy, Jerry, the Leafs have got to give them credit. They have made the most of their opportunities. Boy, have they ever. I don't think Larry Robinson knew that 
uh, Dan Maloney was coming up on the right side of the ice. He didn't appear to, to play it play it that way, and I'm not sure that he knew it. See how close he is to Walt McKechnie, and if he'd have known that Dan Maloney was in the clear on the other side, he'd have been more in the middle of the ice. And I wonder if Ken Dryden expected the shot to the short side. It, it almost looks like it went through Ken Dryden's legs. Okay, we'll get a good look at it here. No, nope. nope. it's on the short side. Over the glove, short side. Good shot by Maloney, 2-0 Toronto. Three twenty-three. give Ellis an assist also, along with McKechnie. The Leafs, too. Canadians don't score. Now, Lemire missed that pass. Burroughs clearing it back into Canadians' territory. And you're going to see the Leafs with this lead now. Suffocatingly, check the Canadians if they can. Now, Montreal starting out on the left side. Shut, slashes the shot in there. In on the boards, it comes on the left side. And Boutet has it knocked off his stick. Lafleur couldn't come up with it. Anglum to Lapointe. So all you have, the Leafs defense are way down there now at the Canadian's line. Montreal starting out into the center ice area. Anglum in over the line, and it's called on the offside. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. Before, no coward. After, no coward. <laughs> no coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. Here's another replay of the goal, and I don't believe Larry Robinson did know Dan Maloney was there because he'd have been in the center of the ice playing both men instead of just Walt McKechnie. Maloney show the burst of speed on that the way he broke out of the pack back there just the, like the way Jerry Pinder used to skate <laughs> into the corner on the other side the fleur it comes back to the pack now a strange goal Jerry the Leafs got a clean cut one there with Maloney that time it was a case of follow the bouncing puck for Montreal well, yeah, really shut, just redirected it, and uh, Paul Matier looked more surprised than anything as it snuck underneath him here. She shut, redirected, and it goes right between Paul Matier's legs. I think it went off Burroughs in front of the net, if we can get another look at it. It seemed to deflect. The shot just let it go with his back to the net, and I have a feeling that it might have deflected off the Toronto defense man, Burroughs, number 26. So it's Steve back to a one-goal margin for Toronto as the Canadians get on the board. It's 2-1 to one leaps. 
wasn't really a Avec classic goal. His NHL president, John Ziegler, and his WHA counterpart, Baldwin, Howard Baldwin. Now the Leafs starting out. Toronto 2, Montreal 1. There's a long shot into the corner. Dryden knocking it to Robinson on the left side. He missed Lafleur with it. Lafleur gets it, a back pass. Lemaire is in over the line, shoots it. He's wide with it. Now on the left side, Burroughs. His pass hit Ganey. Boutet is starting out. There's going to be a penalty to Lemaire for tripping. I think it was Lemaire. And the Canadians touching it, and the whistle sounds, and the penalty will be assessed against the Canadians. Now Jacques Lemaire doesn't draw too many of them, but he gets one right there. As we take a look here, Lemaire, number 25 of Montreal, Boutet, 15 of the Leafs. And down goes Boutet, and off to the penalty box goes Lemaire. You see referee Hood on the left of your screens, raising the arm to signal the penalty against Jacques Lemaire. Penalty to number 25, Jacques Lemaire. Two minutes for tripping at 5.20. Brian Trotche has scored for the Islanders. They lead Chicago 3-1 in the second period. Don Maloney and Phil Esposito have scored for the Rangers. Kelly for Philadelphia. New York leading 2-1 in the second period. Boston running away from Pittsburgh. Redmond has given them a 6-1 lead. That game's still in the second period. And so, Toronto Maple Leafs with the face-off in Montreal territory. They are on the power play. Back it goes. Wilson over to McDonald. Now Turnbull winding up for the shot. Loose puck in front of the net. Savard can't clear it. Now Wilson over on this side to Turnbull. There's the shot again. They fight for it in front. And Dryden down there. And the Canadians had a close call. The Leafs got two good scoring opportunities. Sir Savard came to the rescue, Jerry, from Montreal with Dryden down and out of position. I don't know if this is the, the shot. Both of them came in from that side. Yes, it is. Savard takes the puck away. It's Sittler was there. There you see Dryden just now getting back into position. Well, you know, the Montreal Canadiens really can't afford too many penalties either because Toronto does have a heck of a good power play. Sittler is at center. Gardner, number 18, on the right side. McDonald on the left wing. Turnbull and Wilson back at the points. Now Ganey shoots it down the ice. Up front for Montreal, Ganey. Now Risebrow's relieved by Savard. Lapointe and Robinson are, are playing back. Robinson may move up front. Now, Sittler leading the attack for Toronto. That pass way wide. Dryden to Ganey. Ganey on the boards. It's clear to the other side. Robinson and McDonald go after it. McDonald knocked off balance. Leafs trying to keep it in. They do. Into the corner. Sittler trying to get in front. He fired it. Blocked beautifully by Dryden. That was an excellent scoring opportunity for the big captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Sittler. Now with exactly one minute left in the penalty, the Leafs on the power play. They come down, led by Turnbull. He hits the Montreal line. It's knocked off his stick, recovered. That's Wilson, who is a power play specialist. Here's Lambert. Lambert laying it back to Robinson. Robinson clearing it ahead for Savard. Sittler finally takes it for Toronto. Back to his own line to get some skating room. Sittler over on the other side. Robinson shoots it down the ice. 25 seconds left in the Lemaire penalty. The Leafs coming out. Salming is leading the attack. Ahead it goes to Gardner with McKechnie and McDonald. McDonald in from the left side. Getting set to pass it. It goes by everybody into the center ice area. Now Salmi ahead. Toronto had the good opportunities in the first 15 seconds. Since then, the Canadians have defended well, and now Lemaire is back on. Burroughs takes a long shot. Toronto 2, Montreal 1. Now the Canadians starting out. Shot has it into the center ice area. He goes to drop pass to Robinson. Robinson shooting it right on. Palmatier clearing it. Lafleur getting it back to Chartreuse. Speed shot. And it hits Salming in front. Now behind the net it goes. 
Here's Lemaire trying to get it. It's off his stick. Gardner knocked it into the center ice area. Lafleur turning at his own line. Lafleur coming down. Goes to the right side. Lafleur over the line. He's knocked down. And the Leafs clear it into the center ice area. Chartra back to Engblom. Engblom's pass off shut stick. Here, Jones takes the shot. He had that one right on, but it was fairly well up. Chartra shooting it into the corner. Shot tied up by Butler. Lemire takes the shot. And that's blocked by Paul Matier. Chartra bump Burrows. Jones has it for Toronto. Now from the corner, Hutchison failed to clear it. It's easy from the mat. Knocked off to the wing of Boutet, cleared it, not out. Lafleur back in for shot. Into the corner, Hutchison trying to get skating will bring it by the back oh, And a sparkling save by Paul McKeer on the backhander by Shutt. And the Leafs were a little sloppy in there. The scores are on a two, Montreal one. This is Stanley Cup 79 from the Forum in Montreal. This is Wendell Clark. I'm inviting you to join me at the Baysell Heart and Stroke Ride for Heart on Sunday, June 7th. This is your only chance to cycle traffic free on the DVP and fundraise for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Each year, one in three Canadian deaths are due to heart disease and stroke. It can strike anyone at any age. Support the Heart and Stroke Foundation today and invest in our health for tomorrow. So who are you riding for? I'm riding for my mom. Register and fundraise now at rideforheart.ca. When a kid comes to our camp, they discover a lot about themselves. And what they learn here will stick with them for the rest of their lives. On Wednesday, June 3rd, Camp Day, buy a coffee and set things in motion. Help send a kid to camp. Tim Horton Children's Foundation, where kids discover their best. Pride, excitement, style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Chalupian on for the Canadians, first time. Mark Napier on for the second time. There is a noticeable diminution in the body blasting. We haven't had too much of it in the second period. But with Lupian out there now, it could pick up again. 13 to 12, the shots on goal. The Leafs are leading, and they lead in the hockey game 2 to 1. Now into the center ice area, Turnbull clearing it in. McKechnie, who is having an outstanding playoff run this year so far. He was outstanding against Atlanta. He got it over to the wing. But then the Canadians cleared it down, and that's Hutchison with it. Up it comes to center. McKechnie shooting it into the corner. Maloney racing in. Dryden knocked it off to the wing. Canadians with Trombley in the corner. Plays it to Lupien. Anderson is going after him. They're along the boards. Canadians... Hank it out. Now the Leafs bring it in, and finally Savard, assisted by Lupian, cleared it down the ice. Turnbull touching it. He's tied up by Mondu. And the faceoff will be to the left of Paul Matier, who pulled off that great save on Steve Shot. Face off. Canadian. Danny, this Everybody is one of up again, of course. And Danny, we haven't seen that much of this sort of thing. Remember, it got to be quite a the situation, the linesman, and so on. This season's been rather free of that. And I think the uh, paying customers are getting a bit impatient with the meticulous manner in which the linesmen are lining them up. Toronto again getting the face off. Here's Salming coming out. The pass 
Now Boutet finally took it from Jones, takes the long shot, big rebound. Robinson clearing it to the line. LaMere couldn't get anywhere. Boutet back in his own zone. Jones lost it. Here's the floor. He shoots it right on. Blocking it beautifully was Paul Mateer. And that could have been a tough one because Lafleur seemed to be behind the defenseman. Zalming whipped it around on the boards. Lupien knocked Boutet down. Or that was at point. it was. Number five. He had just come on the ice. Here's Robinson up on the left side. He clears it in. Big Robinson around the net trying to center it. Here's Trombley going after it. Back to Ganey. There's the shot. It's off a of body. Ganey closing in for the shot. A rising shot. And it's knocked out over the line by Boutet. Now LaPointe and Butler bumping. Jones has been hurt. He got that one, I guess, on the ankle, Jerry, or the knee, I don't know. And he's in a lot of trouble now. Face off in the center ice area. We'll check on Jones. And get the information on his injury. He limped off. Canadian shooting it in. Now Ellis starting out along with Settler. Reisbrough fed it back in there. Anvil plays it on the board. There's a long floating shot by Engblom. Around the boards it comes to the left side of Williams. His pass is stopped at the line by Lambert. Lambert going in against Kenville. They go into the boards heavily. Zippler tried to feed it ahead and out over the line. And it's held there for a faceoff. 8.26 left in the second period. 2-1 Toronto in front. Well, we heard from Scotty Bowman as to what he thought the series might uh, bring about. See if Roger Nielsen agrees with his assessment. Our game plan is to get Canadians to play as physical a series as possible. Uh, we also know that we have to shut down their power play, contain Guy Lafleur, and, and stop the quick break. Uh, certainly there's emotion involved when Canadians in Toronto play. All Canada feels it. And the face-off, here's Engblom winding up. A toe save very coolly by Paul Mateer. Now then Williams in the corner. Williams flipping it high into the air. Savard taking over. On the far side, Engblom comes up on the wing and he shoots it into the corner. Chartres going after Williams. A couple of tough individuals. Williams falling, he's on the puck. There's quite a contrast in styles, goaltending styles between these two teams. You have Paul Mateer, who's very aggressive and challenges the players, and then you have Dryden, who's a much bigger man and covers a lot more territory in the nets. And uh, it's really a, a tremendous situation to be in with the two separate goaltenders being as different as they are. Jerry, did you play with Kenny in the national team? Yes, I did. Paul Mateer exudes tremendous confidence. Jean-Pierre Roy. Well, no, a Montreal baseball broadcaster, former professional player in attendance tonight. Steve Rogers is here tonight. Ross Grimsley met them coming in. They're all excited. They have tickets for Wednesday as well. And the Expo is doing very well. So are the Blue Jays. Huh? Now Lafleur at the line. Over it goes to Robinson. Closing in. Big save by Paul McKeer. Penalty coming up for interference against Turnbull, I would think. Well, Jerry, it's two to one. The Leafs are in the lead. Shots on goal aren't that much, although the Canadians have now pulled ahead. But you know, this game after the Leafs had those good chances early in the Lemaire penalty, Canadians did a good job killing the rest of it, and it seems to have turned since then. Strangely enough, uh, at this point, we'll take a break here with Turnbull going to the penalty box. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. Before Noel Coward.
After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. When a kid comes to our camp, they discover a lot about themselves. And what they learn here will stick with them for the rest of their lives. On Wednesday, June 3rd, Camp Day, buy a coffee and set things in motion. Help send a kid to camp. Tim Horton Children's Foundation, where kids discover their best. Here's a look at why Turnbull's penalized, flattening Mondo in front. Jimmy Jones is back. He hobbled off here a few moments ago. I guess he walked it off down in the hallway. He's out there to kill the penalty. There's another look at why Turnbull's off for interference. Mondu shot Robinson up front. Lapointe and Lafleur on the points on this power play for Montreal. Robinson passed it back. And it's into that center ice area again. Butler, Jones, Salmi, and Burroughs defending for the Leafs. Leafs leading. I have scored 2 1. Mondu shooting it in. Now Burroughs from the corner. Couldn't clear it out, but Jones picked it up and shot it down the ice. Lafleur going to lead this attack if he can get some skating room against Butler there the pass goes to Robinson over on the wing to Lapointe Lapointe clears it to the line Mondu has it Mondu getting it back to shut shut fake the shot here's Lapointe over the other side to Lafleur back to shut shut shot off a leg Lapointe has it Lapointe over to shut shut gives it to Lafleur closing it Coming off the bench seems to be a playoff tradition now with these teams. Jerry, I don't think Paul Mateer saw it. He didn't react until the puck was in, the light was on, and the people yelled. Couldn't blame him either. Well, the way the Montreal Canadiens set this power play up was beautiful. Watch Shut make the play to Lafleur here, and all he has to do is walk in and blast it. But they made two or three quick passes. We're going to get a shot of Larry Robinson creating a lot of trouble in front of the Toronto net, and that's the reason he's out there on the power play. Also watch Paul Mater's reaction. See, he can't see a thing. He doesn't see it, that's no. right. Robinson doesn't even have to hit him or tangle with him or anything. All he has to do is stand there. And as we mentioned before, Toronto got away with the penalties in the first period, but against a team like Montreal, it's going to catch up with you sooner or later. There's the scoring play at 13.05. Power play goal by Lafleur. And the game is tied 2-2. Goal. Canadian's goal was scored by number 10, Guy Lafleur, assisted by number 22, Steve Shutt, and number 5, Guy Lapointe, at 13.05. 13.05, the time of the tying goal. Anglom coming in on the left side, shoots, he hit the goal post, or the outside of it on the far side. And the angle was very sharp. Score tied at two goals. Now McDonald shooting it in for Toronto. Savard around the net. Savard coming out with rise brow, sharp draw on Ganey. They don't get very far. Coming back for Toronto. On the left side was Williams, and then Savard gets it out to Ganey. Ganey down on the left side. Sharp draw coming up. Sharp draw couldn't pick it up. And the net was wide open. Palmatier had come out. Sharp draw couldn't make contact in front of the net. Granted the pass was very hard to be able off the ice. Now Turnbull 
in behind the net. Coming out slowly. Over on the far side. Here's Sittler coming up. Couldn't get by Englund. Englund ahead to Lafleur. Lafleur cutting. Lafleur passing it back. They shoot. Oh, another shot. Splendid effort by Paul Matier. Oh, remarkable. Here's a replay of this, and Lafleur makes a fantastic play to Engblom, and watch the save that Paul Matier makes here. In fact, I think he makes two of them. Oh, yeah, Engblom took a shot at the rebound. Tremendous ball tending. Here's another one. Score tied, 2-2. Shots on goal are now 21 to 14 for Montreal, which would buttress your uh, observation, Jerry. Salmi. Clearing it into the center ice area. Here's Boutet coming down over the line. A pass for Ellis. It's behind him. Ellis checked by Tremblay. Now Mondu behind the net, turning with Napier, who has it on the left side. Tremblay is on the other wing. Long shot. Paul Matier takes his time. Boy, he is confident. Now right in front of Mondu. He hit the goal post. Mondu hit the goal post. It will not Paul Matier. Then off the left goal post. How about that? Unbelievable action here. Well, we're going to take another look at it. It's the second time Canadians have hit the post. Palmateur himself brought this about a, after a fashion, I guess, Jerry. Well, I think what happened is he got rattled when uh, Trombley went by and gave him a whack with his stick, and he gave the puck right back to Trombley. It goes off the post. <laughs> Back it goes, Robinson shooting it, it's off a stick. Here is Turnbull. Turnbull around the net, leading the attack for the Leafs. A neat pass goes to Jones over on the left side to Boutet. Gently, it goes into the corner. Butler, now Jones chopped at it. Into the corner again, Robinson taking over for Montreal. Robinson stopping. Robinson trying to get some skating room with less than five minutes to go in this second period. Here's Robinson down on the line. Robinson is over the line, trying to drop it back. Shot, a pass over to Lafleur. In on the other side it goes. Here's Lemaire taking a look. Robinson is right in front. Lapointe gets it, it came off a leg. Lapointe to Lafleur. Lafleur, in behind the net it goes. Penalty coming up. Steve Shutt will go off for interference. Steve Shutt dumping Boria Salmang right at the side of the Toronto net. And the Canadians will now be into a penalty killing situation. Did Steve Shutt dropped the stick and said, uh, who me? And I don't think there's <laughs> much doubt about that call. So the Leafs get a power play chance with the score tied. 4.23 left. But look here at why Steve Shutt has got in the penalty box. Jerry, at one point in this period, the Leafs had outshot the Canadians 13-12. Right now, the margin is 23 to 14, so Montreal is outshot the Leafs 11 to 1. Can Steve shot that time of the Lamar penalty? For well, he's completely taken 15. over the game at this point. However, having to kill off a penalty right. might make a big difference to the Toronto Maple Leafs because they do have that excellent power play. Mr. Frank J. Selke in attendance said, How many playoff rounds has he seen, Danny? How many games? There you go. There's Steve shot. <laughs> As Jerry said, Who, me, ref? <laughs> well, Mr. Saki has been associated with hockey amateur and professional for about 63 years. So he has seen a few goals in his years. Let's see what's going to happen here. Here's Salming with that head fake over the other side of Settler. Settler playing it into the corner. McDonald has it. He falls. Savard tucks it against the boards. It's loose. Sittler into the corner, behind the net. McDonald is going to pick it up against Savard. Back it goes to Salming. He cleared it back in. Savard knocked it down. And he cleared it into the center ice area. Wilson, number 14, on there, used exclusively tonight so far on the power play. And Wilson takes that pass from Sittler. Back into the center ice area. Close quarters. Now Wilson trying to get some skating room. Gives it to McDonald. Back to Salming over on the other side to Sittler. Sittler digging for the corner. Tied up. McDonald goes into the corner behind the net. Williams going after it against Ganey. Ganey failed to clear it out. There's a shot right on the rebound to McDonald. 
on the Wilson shot. And finally, Dryden cleared it. Front it comes. Ganey intercepts it. Ganey into the center ice area. He's checked by McDonald. And now with 38 seconds left in the penalty, we have exactly three minutes remaining in this, the second period. We're on the Maple Leafs, solving the workhorse over the line, fakes the shot. Right in front, it comes off the stick and then out over the line. Wilson dropping it to the other side to Sittler. Ahead to Williams, he clears it into Canadians' territory. Digging in there doggedly is number seven, McDonald. He ran into Dryden and the Canadians defending very well. They shoot it down the ice. Now it's intercepted by Risebrow. Risebrow, his pass tipped off. Hutchison's lead pass was down the ice. Anglom touches it. And with the expiration of the final day, we have an icing call against Toronto. Live from the Forum of Montreal, the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Heart and Stroke Lottery early bird deadline is fast approaching. Buy early and you could win 300 grand. With your best odds, one in three, it's easy to imagine winning. There are three grand prizes of one million dollars and millions more in exciting prizes. It's your best odds, one in three. Plus, you'll support life-saving heart and stroke research. The early bird deadline is fast approaching. For the best odds, one in three, call 1-888-551-1111 now. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse. Wealth of experience. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. After Dan Maloney gave the Maple Leafs a 2-0 lead, Steve Shutt has uh, got the Canadian... You know, it's Leafs TV. I don't really have to like you, you see. It's just the way it is. Awful. But get on with Joe. it. You're not a bad guy. No, no. <laughs> get over to, it. Remember we used to do the radio together? I know that. I know that. But Guy Lafleur then scores to tie the game, so I'm really beside myself now. Uh, the Canadians' power play. Um, it, it's set up traditionally, but then... Uh, Creativity takes over, and it was this something that Bowman worked on? Uh, it's, I don't know whether Scotty worked on it or the players themselves. I think it was a lot of the players themselves because we had so much talent on the team. Uh, but what we did is, is uh, at that era, don't forget we're going back a couple of years, and it was a very traditional. Most power plays, you know, kept their points uh, back on the blue line. The forwards were up and center, and they tried to work it around the box. Um, what we did is, you know, we worked the puck around, but we started rotating all the way around. So, uh, you know, if you see this, uh, this power play goal, Lafleur is back on the point, uh, lets a shot go, and who's in front of the net but Larry? And I believe uh, that the other defenseman is in front of the net as well, and I think I'm right beside, uh, right beside Guy. So it, it was very unconventional. Uh, at in that era, but it was filling in for people and going to open space and uh, and and if it's if the box uh, it, yep. it's tough to maintain the box when literally the power play is, is shifting around and changing spots all the time. And it would still work today. Uh, you know, we look at power plays today. Uh, the power play that does not work is the one that's stationary. Uh, if you if you're standing there and trying to just pass the puck. 
well, I mean, these, these penalty killers are going to eat you alive. But if you start moving, uh, like what we did on this power play, boy, it's tough to defend. And that'll work until you get a shorthanded goal scored against two forwards playing defense, and then the coach <laughs> says, no, we're going back to square one. Who are you kidding with the? But you know what? I, did not Larry Robinson in his early years, when he first broke in, they'd move him up on the forward line on the power play and stick him in front of the net because of his size. And we still see yeah. that today with somebody like yeah. Zdeno Chara being utilized in that yeah. regard by the Ottawa Senators. Yeah, again, uh, you know, Scotty not afraid to make uh, uh, do unconventional moves would, would move Larry up there and uh, we'd, we'd put Lafleur back in the point or myself and just get the shot through uh, but also you know once Larry started really progressing and being a really good puck carrier the way that he, he, he wound up uh, you know we had a pretty good power play not <laughs> not bad well the power play is clicked and the Leafs two nothing lead is uh, gone for naught it's a 2-2 tie midway through period number two and let's go up to the great Danny Gallivan two minutes and 18 seconds left in the second period from the face off again the Leafs get the draw Turnbull lost it to Lombert Lombert around the net. He takes a look. It's centered and it's off Turnbull's leg. Boutet. A neat pass from McKechnie to Ellis on the other side. Ellis drifts one in there and Dryden. On to the knees. Grabbed it. Okay, the Leafs. Everybody up. Number six there you see Ellis. He's poised. Should McKechnie get it back? And again, we have a couple of players waved out of that uh, circle. Now Lafleur against Boutet. Turnbull and Hutchison playing up, and the Canadians get the draw. McKechnie stops it, cleared it. It's into the corner. Here is Engblom. Engblom into the center ice area. Ahead to Lafleur. Lafleur over the line. Back it goes to Napier. To the other side to Engblom. Turnbull in the corner against Mondu, and they get a whistle. The crowd tonight, not a big crowd. This happens so often in the playoffs. I suppose it's because of the increase in price. 15,946 is the crowd. That's one of the smaller crowds of the year because the attendance at the Forum in Montreal has been substantially up over last year. Well, the ones who didn't show up are missing a fine hockey game, that's for sure. Indeed they are. Mondu on the faceoff, Turnbull behind the net, he lost it, it's tipped to the crease by Napier. The Leafs roll it down on the left side. We have Lafleur out now on this line with Napier and Mondu. Robinson is tied up by Ellis, here's Boutet laying it back to Turnbull. Salming on the other side. His pass to the Canadians line, and they're going into a rather cautious pattern ending this period as they start at the period. Engblom was upended by Turnbull. Less than a minute to play in the second period. Turnbull, ahead it goes to Boutet. Boutet swings over to the left side, shooting it into Canadians territory. Now Sittler moves in. Randy McDonald's off the bench, so is Maloney. The Leafs may have had too many men on the ice. Lemire takes a shot, he's wide. Now the puck comes on the far boards. At the line, Lapointe kept it in, and it's a delayed offside. There was a fan reaction when the Leafs were changing, and I saw Maloney scurry back to the bench. One of the things that makes the Montreal Canadiens special, Danny, is the way they pass the puck. A lot of teams are have good passers, have good offensive hockey players, but the Leafs don't hold, or pardon me, the Canadians don't hold on to the puck very, very long. They get it and it's gone to someone else in a big hurry. Now we have 26 seconds left in the second period. Salming over to Burroughs. The Leafs two and the Canadians two with Maloney on the ice finally clearing it in. LaPointe knocked it into the center ice area. Salming laying it down on the wing. Savard taken in on the boards by Sittler, solving, bumping Ganey rather gently, and that brings us down to seven seconds. Neither team, of course, wants to give up a goal in the final 
seconds of a period. Somehow or other, everybody seems to think that the team that scores that goal late in the period gets what they call momentum. You've heard that, have you? Yes, for sure, and they do say it's a real bad goal to give up in the last minute of a period. But you subscribe to momentum, do you? For sure. Buck is down the ice into Toronto territory, and this is going to bring about the end of the period. 23 to 17, the shots on goal for Montreal after two periods, and so the score at the end of the second period, Toronto 2, Montreal 2. And now we have number 11. How many did you get tonight, Scott? Uh, I got four. Oh, my. Before, Noel Coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. Head on down to BMO Field June 6th as the circus comes to town. Better yet, catch Toronto FC and the Los Angeles Galaxy on CBC Sports. Well, the, uh, the battle of wits between Scotty Bowman and Roger Nielsen is certainly on. It's a 2-2 tie at the end of the second period. And, uh, well, it's, it's Scotty Bowman being Scotty. Did he have a hat in the back with all your names in it? Uh, everybody is going to have to watch and just see how many line combinations he comes up with. Uh, it's just mind-boggling. And uh, I remember I was sitting on the bench in the second or third period, and so he yelled out, Lemaire's line next. So I looked over to him and I says, who's on Lemaire's line? <laughs> <laughs> Who have you decided upon? And he's done this throughout his career, hasn't he? It's, and, and now you guys are quite used to it. But what's the opposition yeah. going through? We were used to it. We were an experienced team, experienced playoff team. Uh, we had been used to this uh, on a constant basis. So for us to change uh, and intertwine between different lines, uh, was nothing new for us, and we just rolled them. You can see that the, that the, the game was rolling along. Uh, the speed was starting to pick up. Uh, but you could see that also that the Leafs, and especially uh, Daryl and Lanny, uh, were starting to feel a little uncomfortable because I think Roger was starting to mix and max the lines a little bit, and it's not something that I don't think they did during the regular season. And uh, you could see that in the third period that, that they're not really as effective and that they just look a little bit uncomfortable. Now, um, Scotty does all this without a piece of paper, without the line up in front of him. It's just what's going through this fertile imagination, isn't it? And we're not too sure what's there. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I've always wondered this, and, and maybe one day I'll ask him, he says, you know, all those line changes, were they for a purpose or were they just, you're just pulling names out of a hat? And, and I think it might be a little bit of both. A little bit of both. <laughs> but it had its desired effect. And you know what? It's, it's funny because this is an era now where the game is changing. Yep. Uh, the French connection line, the, uh, the triple crown line, the kid line. I mean, all of these lines, they were famous. They were static. Uh, the Kraut line, all of this was very static. These guys played together for so long. And, and when you talk to them, they, they rave about their line mates mm -hmm. and about how he brought this to the line and how he brought that to the line. And now Scotty's going out and saying, we don't have any lines. Yeah. We have the next three guys going out there. 
Well, he would do it, but he also, there was, there was a, a certain thought process because mostly it was, it was myself and Lafleur, it was Ganey and Jarvis, it was the uh, Riseboro to Tremblay Lombard line. So that was pretty much the nucleus. And then the other guys would kind of fill and match. And, uh, and that, that's, he would try and keep it like that. But then, as you'll see in this game, uh, even that didn't even hold up. All right. Well, it is a 2-2 tie in game one of the Stanley Cup quarterfinal series between the Leafs and Canadians. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. When a kid comes to our camp, they discover a lot about themselves. And what they learn here will stick with them for the rest of their lives. On Wednesday, June 3rd, Camp Day, buy a coffee and set things in motion. Help send a kid to camp. Tim Horton Children's Foundation, where kids discover their best. Pride, excitement, style, it's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Before, no coward. After, no coward. <laughs> no coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30, no coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. The Maple Leafs have not beaten the Canadians in 13 consecutive games, and that dates back as well to the previous spring when the Canadians beat the Leafs in four straight games after the Leafs had knocked off the Islanders. But the Leafs were without a key component in that series against Montreal. Boria Salming had been high-sticked in the eye by Lauren Henning and was not available to play. And at this particular point, 1979, this guy is in the zenith of his career uh, as far as uh, playing for the Maple Leafs. Is oh, concerned. he certainly was. Uh, you know, you put Larry, you put, I put him in the class with, with Larry. Uh, you know, Serge at that time was starting to get a little older, and so was LaPointe. But uh, I would put, uh, you know, Larry, uh, Boria, and uh, Denny Potvin at that time as, as the premier defenseman. And uh, we took special. Uh, precautions against him. What we tried to do is uh, every time there was a dumping, we tried to put it into his corner. We wanted to make him skate. Uh, got him in the corner and then just tried to take the body as much as we could on him. Now, this is a guy that is an amazing athletic specimen and, and he could skate for, for weeks and not get tired. But anybody that does take a pounding a little bit, maybe doesn't do the things, maybe he's not going to rush the puck as often, but uh, you couldn't intimidate him. Yeah. Well, there's no way. And uh, it was... Uh, pretty interesting because when he came into the league it was you know there was the, the whole chicken swede thing and and uh, I mean he took more abuse uh, but then he just kept taking it and taking it and then one year and I don't know what year it was he decided enough was enough he's gonna start dishing it out and uh, so somebody went after him well then he turned around went right after them and then after that uh, he got a little bit more room and a lot more respect. Uh, I know the Philadelphia Flyers used to take liberties with him and, and he would not back down. I mean, it was just his makeup to do that. But uh, in the early days when he came over, uh, Steve, he was a, a very good offensive yeah. rushing defenseman. Later on in his career when the team was not nearly as good and he was playing with a lot of youngsters, it was more yeah. sit back and play defense. Uh, well, he certainly was and, and we just, uh, you know, we were very... Uh, aware when he was out on the ice and Scotty made us very aware and uh, when he t had the puck you know we tried to make him you had to take him out 
uh, that was, you know, Scotty was saying, take him out, take him out, take him out, make him pass the puck. And, uh, you know, that's what, what our game plan was against Borea. All right, Borea Salming and the Maple Leafs and the Canadians are tied 2-2 after 2. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. When a kid comes to our camp, they discover a lot about themselves. And what they learn here will stick with them for the rest of their lives. On Wednesday, June 3rd, Camp Day, buy a coffee and set things in motion. Help send a kid to camp. Tim Horton Children's Foundation, where kids discover their best. And now the third period is underway. Salme back at the line. Score tied 2-2 two -two up on the wing. It goes off Burrow's stick. And Savard has it. Robinson getting it ahead to the floor on the other side to Lemaire. And it is called on the offside. The next game in this series will be played here at the Montreal Forum on Wednesday night. And then the scene shifts to Toronto for games not Friday and Sunday, but Saturday and Sunday at Maple Leaf Gardens. Now Salme drifts the long shot in. Robinson from in front of the net. Robinson leading the attack for Montreal. The pass is stopped back on the right side as Jones. He winds up. There's the shot. And a big, quick leg save by Dryden. Jones was going for the far side. And he had the target. Butler shooting it. He almost stand on it. The Leafs pressing here. The Canadians tipping it out over the line, led by Lafleur, and it goes over the board. Well, we have the same situation here, Danny. Uh, Pat Boutet covering Lafleur very well, and he really hasn't had much room to move tonight. But then you look at the scoring statistics, and he has a goal and an assist, so that isn't too bad. Now then, Ganey off the bench along with Risebrow. Scotty Bowman decides to send Lafleur back on. So the line here will be Lemaire at center, Lafleur on the right side, Ganey on the left wing. McDonald, Settler, and Boutet, of course, stays out there with Lafleur remaining on the ice for Montreal and Savard ahead on the wing. It goes to Lemaire into the center ice area. To Lafleur, he was upended just crossing the line. That brought a reaction from the Canadian supporters. Toronto trying to get it out. They do. Into the center ice area. Ganey shovels it over on the far wing. Turnbull with Lafleur after him. Turnbull is forced into the corner. Now Lemaire goes in there. Lemaire playing it. Turnbull hooked it back into the corner. Lafleur going after it. Lemaire has it. He jostles with Sittler on the board. Sittler kneels and the puck is under him. One minute and 24 seconds have elapsed into the third period, and now Roger Nielsen is sending out McKechnie, Maloney. They combine for a beautiful goal, the second Toronto goal. Lanny McDonald is coming on. So Nielsen making quick changes here in the early stages of the third period. Scotty Bowman has the last change, and he's just waiting to see whether Pat Boutet goes off or not and in order to maybe put Lafleur back on the ice. But now we see Lafleur sitting down on the bench, so I guess he's not going to go back out. 
Scotty Bowman, 529 victories during regular NHL play. You saw him behind the bench. Rumors that he's going to leave every year it happens. But you can rest assured he'll remain in the National Hockey League until he has chalked up 700 victories. That will be about four years. There's a shot. Oh, and Ricochet just wide. That was a screenshot with Kenville and Lemaire blocking Paul Matier. Now the Canadians keeping it in. Napier along the boards. He swings it over to the other side. Kenville has it for Toronto. It goes to center. Robinson's pass. Now Ganey sweeps it to the other side. Here is Savard. His shot is blocked by McKechnie. McKechnie ahead to Maloney. He stepped in there too quickly. Well, there's big Larry Robinson quickly there without his beard. He was sporting for the last month or so. Dan Maloney getting that second Toronto goal. Jerry, I overheard Danny talking to some of his maritime friends before the game, saying that he was going to be surrounded by the Saskatchewan connection here tonight. I, I don't know. It's a very <laughs> difficult league in which to perform. <laughs> well, that was a difficult performance turned in by Palmatier, but he did the job. That shot by Savard got behind him. We look at it from this angle. Oh, and ricocheted off a skate. See that right in front of the Yeah, ricocheted. Look. Turnbull sliding it over to Kenville. Too far for McKechnie, and now Mondu on the right side. He has Trombley with him. Mondu, a rising shot off the stick of Turnbull over the glass. I wonder how important, Dick, the Montreal bench is going to be in this series. They have probably more depth than any team in professional hockey right now. Funny thing tonight here is both coaches are not really using everybody. For example, players like Wilson, Gardner, Anderson, not seeing much service for Toronto, Lupien, Napier, Connor, Poole for Montreal. Now Kenville sliding it to the right side to McDonald. McDonald ripped that shot, but in very quickly on the left side was Maloney, and that's another offside infraction against the Leafs. Well, Brian Engblom got hit by that shot, shaken up just a bit. There is Serge Savard. He didn't know that he was playing in his 103rd Stanley Cup game tonight. He doesn't keep track of such things. Won the Consmite Trophy in his second playoff year, 1969. And you look back a number of years ago, all the unfortunate breaks he had to the tune of two broken legs. Now Salmi, out to center. Maloney dropping it back to McKechnie. Maloney along the boards against Trombley. They fall. And let's see, a whistle again. So we have a fair frequency of whistles in the early stages of the third period. When we're talking about the Montreal bench strength, we can't forget that Pierre LaRouche and Pat Hughes, both tremendous hockey players, aren't even in uniform tonight. And that's an indication of uh, just how much bench strength they really do have. There's a familiar story in from the Nassau County Coliseum. Mike Bossy has scored a goal for the Islanders. Murray for Chicago. It's now at the end of two. And the Islanders lead the Blackhawks 4-2. to two. A good shot of linesman Ron Finn. He is waiting to drop the puck. Between Sittler and Risebrow to the right of Dryden, Salming and Burroughs in over the line. From the face off, Anderson tried to get a shot. Now Burroughs shooting it wide. Dryden cleared the rebound into the corner. Chartrand to the other side with it. Anderson after Robinson. Savard losing it. Sittler centered it. Canadian starting off. Lombert on the right side to Chartrand. Chartra over to Risebrow. Good back checking by Anderson. Number 10, he got back there to intercept that pass. Here is Robinson. He lost it. It's recovered by Lambert. Lambert playing it ahead up on the left side. Tiger Williams against Savard. He got his elbows up on Savard. Here's Salming firing at a quick shot. He has a beautiful wrist shot. And Dryden had to be very, very quick on that. Now Risebrow out on the right side for Chartres. He tipped it ahead going in against Burroughs. To the other side, Hutchison and Lambert along the boards. Robinson can't keep it in. Toronto Maple Leafs, here's Sittler, dropping it back. It's at the line. Lafleur wheels away, chases it to the right side. He tried to get a pass to Lambert. Now on the right side, Turnbull, an excellent rushing defenseman. Turnbull is in over the line. Turnbull around the net. Tried to center it. Into the corner it goes Lemire. Playing it against the boards. Back to the line. 
Hutchinson shooting it, a weak shot. Robinson on the left side. Pass goes through center. We're nearing the fifth minute mark in the third period. The score is tied at two. Up on the right side. Canadians keeping it in. Here's shot. Back and go. They score! Jerry, a lot of things happened right there, but I think a big key had to be Lemaire just letting it go as soon as he got it. Well, he's famous for this for many, many years in National Hockey League. We're going to have a replay here. Watch Shut steal the puck away from Hutchison. He's making a pass off the boards. And Shut takes, he makes a heck of a play. Lemaire just lets it go, doesn't even bother to stop it. And what that really does is it doesn't give Mike Palmatier a chance to get set. No, no chance at all. Hutchison threw the puck away off the board, and it cost the Leafs. And the Canadians, who were down 2 0 in the second period, have now taken a 3 2 lead. Five, Jacques Lemaire, assisted by number 22, Steve Shutt, at 4 23. So each member of that line with a goal, Montreal has taken the lead to 3 2. Toronto Maple Leafs, four of them out over the line into the center ice area. Boutet lost it. Burroughs back in his own zone. Pass ricochets over to the wing. Butler clearing it. A hit Lafleur. He goes in after Salming. Butler moving in for good measure. They might get a whistle here as a cluster of players come up against the boards in the corner. From the farm in Montreal, this is Stanley Cup 79. Hi, this is Chuck Storm. I'm live at the scene where last night there was a robbery at about 3.30 in the morning. Now, police have... Oh, oh. Pride, excitement, style, it's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Saturday, it has this, D Rosario. Face off to the right of Paul Matier. Now there's a close-up look at Paul Matier trying to get in position for the shot from this fellow, Jacques Lemaire, but Lemaire beat him on the drive. McKechnie against Mondu. Leaf start out quickly. Ellis, the veteran, comes through center, hits the Montreal line over, goes to Maloney. There's the shot, it's off a leg. They center it. Back it comes. Salming trying to keep it in. He slides on the ice. What a great play by Salming. Keeping it in. Here's McKechnie. McKechnie centering it. It goes across the lip of the crease. Canadians shooting it out. Englund got it to center. So you'll have the application of pressure now by the Toronto Maple Leafs. into the center ice area. It's whipped back in by Tremblay. Andu going in rather slowly against Salming. Ellis on the right side and center. Goes over the other side. Ellis over the line. There's the shot wide. The rebound. Dryden giving it to Savard. Savard on the right side for Chartres. Chartres dumping it to the corner. There's Ganey going in. Palmatier watches him. Ganey getting it back. The Leafs. Gardner tipping it out to center. I think that's the first regular shift that Gardner has had tonight. He has been on previously on the power play. Number 18. Anderson over on the far side. Williams chasing it. 
Canadians clearing it. Offside. Here's the scoring summary. We had 14 penalties called in the first period, three in the second, and I don't think there's been one here in this third period, has there? Turnbull shooting it in. McDonald coming from the other side. Now Ganey on the left wing. Rolled it in over the line. There's Turnbull watching. Chartra, they bump solidly. McDonald up into the center ice area for Gardner. Gardner at the line, going in on goal. Shoots on Brighton, had that one go off his left arm. Gardner was able to get right in there. And he let it go point blank range. Clock goes to the Leafs bench. Well, your team won't get a much better chance at a three on two, I'll tell you. Right here. Pretty good gunner had the chance, too, Jerry. Tried to make Gardner. a good stop on that play. As the game progresses, Dick and Danny, you know, the, the Canadians with the 3 2 lead. Toronto has to continually open up more and more as the game goes on, and this is just eating into Montreal's, eating right out of their hands because that's the style they love to play, is a wide open game. That's why he had Gardner out there right here. Danny mentioned. Salming on the right wing at center. Loses it. Here's Robinson along with Lafleur. Over the line, Lafleur going in. Right in front. Right in front. Well, Jerry, just as you say, the Leafs, they were caught that time. You can't really say it was as a result of a Toronto attack, but you're right, that's, you know, that's the pattern that has developed in the hockey game. Well, watch the play Lafleur makes here after Robinson passes the puck to him. He waits, 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 and has the defenseman at his mercy here. He goes down, and then he feeds it to Lemaire in the center of the ice about 15 feet in front of the goaltender, and no goalie has a chance. He saw me falls on the play, I think right here. That eliminates him from the initial rush. I don't think he ever really gets back. And the player plays it back to Lemaire rather than across to Robinson. Salming got in all right. He did manage to recover. 4-2 Montreal. Uh, number 25, Jacques Lemaire, assisted by number 10, Guy Lafleur, and number 19, Larry Robinson at 7 Here's another look at it, and we're going to see how Lafleur has this defenseman at his mercy here with two or three options. He chooses to sees Lemaire coming through the center, makes the obvious play. LaPointe moving away from the Canadian's blue line, tipping it into the corner. Lemaire has had a big third period. His pass picked up by Boutet ahead to Anderson. Anderson with Sittler. Anderson getting set, takes the shot. It goes off Engblom. In behind the net, they struggle for it. Sittler trying to get it into the crease. It's still loose. A shot by Sittler. And I think he hit his teammate, Anderson or Engblom. That was a glorious scoring opportunity for Sittler. Now Lafleur coming in over the line. Here's Lafleur taking his time. Lifted into the corner for Lemaire. He ran into Salming. Anderson right in front. Tomley takes a shot. Now Napier, Napier twisting and turning, a penalty coming up, Napier centered it off the boards, Dryden is out of the net, the penalty coming up, and is it Salming who is going up? Salming. Dryden had made it to the bench on the delayed call on Boreas Salming, who has to be a little bit frustrated. Boy, the mobility of that Salming is amazing how he got back on that play, although Lemaire scored the goal. Canadians lead 4-2. This is Stanley Cup 79 from the Forum in Montreal. Before, no coward. After, no coward. <laughs> No Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. You invested in early mornings. 
You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. Jacques Lemaire has scored twice. His first from Steve Shutt, second from Guy Lafleur and Larry Robinson. And the Montreal Canadiens now on a 4-2 lead here in game number one. Um, the emergence of Jacques Lemaire as a great two-way player uh, is, is really something. And I guess uh, now his uh, attention to defense has now also been shunted into the coaching department as well, <laughs> where his attention to defense is well documented. But this was a guy that uh, really could do it all. Well, he started uh, as an offensive player, uh, you know, big, go a big goal scorer. He's always been a uh, goal scorer. Um, and I remember what happened. One year, he scored 47 goals. And then in the papers and all summer, well, Lemaire is going to be the next player, the Canadians, to score 50 goals. Well, I think the next year, I think he scored 35 goals. So he scored 35 goals, bad year, people booed him. Uh, and he said, okay. If that's the way you feel, I'm going to play defense. And then that's what he went back, and he played defensive hockey. Uh, he played on the number two line. Uh, that was when Pete was playing with us. And uh, when Scotty moved uh, Lemaire up to play in our line, he just hated it. Uh, he did, did not want to play with us, uh, but just a great player. And you see that as soon as uh, the playoffs came, then all of a sudden the offense would still be there. It is, it's interesting that uh, he would react that way, but a lot of players react to criticism very differently, don't they? Well, and the other thing, too, is uh, people got to understand, when you play in that number one line, uh, there's a lot more pressure because you're the go-to guys. Uh, if you don't score, your team is probably not going to win. So you've got to be there every night. And, uh, you know, and it doesn't mean that... Lit uh, Lemaire couldn't do that. It's just that he didn't want to be the goal-scoring uh, guy where you have to go to him every, every game. And it's interesting then that in his makeup, he decides that he is capable of change, capable of becoming a yeah. defensive player, and now in his coaching philosophy, I'm sure that he approaches players who have been offensive stars yeah. before and says, just a minute, if I can do that, you can do that. Well, it's interesting, too, and I've also seen another, the next change to him with the Minnesota team. He's gone from a trapping coach to uh, a turnover coach. And if you watch that Minnesota team this year, once, you know, they, they played very, very well defensively, but once they got that puck, boy, they scooted, and, and they just took off. They, were just, they weren't just dumping the puck in, and it, that's a lot like how, uh, how Lemaire played. All right. Well, Jacques Lemaire has scored twice, and the Canadians own the lead. Let's go back to Danny Gallivan. Gloria Salme of the Maple Leafs off for slashing at 8.25. Boston has beaten Pittsburgh. That game is over. 6-2 final score at the Garden. And now at the end of two, it's still Rangers ahead of Philadelphia, 2-1. Robinson along the boards against Butler. Shot. Played it to the other side. Here's LaPointe back to Robinson. Robinson giving it to Mondu. Back to Robinson. Over to LaPointe. LaPointe to Robinson. Robinson into Mondu. Mondu to Robinson. He winds up off the leg and rolls in front. Here's Robinson getting it over to LaPointe. LaPointe shooting it in there. Puck loose in front of the net. And Hutchison cleared it away and shoots it down the ice. A minute and 20 seconds left in the penalty. Napier flipping it in, shut going in, around the net, Butler after him, pass out is intercepted by Jones, and Hutchinson again, shoots it down the ice. We have a change in the power play alignment for the Canadians, Lafleur is on the ice now to play with Mondu, shot LaPointe and Robinson. McKechnie comes on for Toronto, ahead to Mondu, he cleared it in. Lafleur on the move, Hutchinson fired it off the glass, and it's in among the spectators. You know, Jerry, there's an old saying, you miss them at one end, they get them at the other, and that three-on-two break that Gardner played pretty well and let the shot go, Dryden got a piece of the puck, that would have made it 3-3. It was a great chance for the Leafs, they go right up the ice, and the Canadians score right after that, and it's a 4-2 hockey game. That's going to turn out to be a key play in the game, and again, Kenny Dryden 
in the second period in particular wasn't tested that severely, but he was there when he had to be in that particular shot by Gardner because he really whistled it. Lemaire with both goals here, breaking the 2-2 tie in the third. LaPointe over for Robinson. Robinson in the corner. He's tied up. Lambert comes up with it in front. Lemaire was upended. Here's Lafleur. Lafleur turning. Lafleur over to Robinson. Right in front. They score! Lambert beautifully executed the goal. Second power play goal of the night for Montreal. And the second power play goal, Jerry, set up by tremendous puck control. Well, this is what the Canadians are famous for. Watch it. It's just unbelievable here. Lafleur gets the puck. Now he's going to make the play to Larry Robinson, and Robinson passes it to a wide open Yvonne Lambert in front of the net. Paul Matier's gambling in that particular right. situation didn't pay off, yeah. but it has so many times before. And a, a smart hockey club is going to notice that Paul Matier attacks and gambles an awful lot. And if you get the opportunity on a power play, that's the obvious way to beat him. Just pass it by him, which is exactly what Montreal did. Yvonne Lambert, assisted by number 19, Larry Robinson, and number 10, Guy Lafleur, at 9.59. 9.59, the time of that fifth goal, Lambert for Robinson and Lafleur, a power play goal. Leafs coming up, Anderson shoots it. Here's Ellis trying to center it. And he hit Risebrow with it. Risebrow to Chartres. Over on the wing to Ganey. So the Canadians have scored five goals without a retaliation. In other words, the Leafs at one stage in this hockey game led two to nothing on goals by Maloney and McDonald. The 2-2 tie was broken in this period. Two consecutive goals by Lemaire and the last one by Lambert. Here's Ellis over the line. Ellis to Anderson. It's off his stick. Mondu skedaddling down on the right side. Maybe he'll pass. No, he doesn't. And Anderson cleared it out. Sittler over on the right side to Ellis. Ellis over the line. There's the shot. Dryden to knock Dryden's mask off. Here's Salming shooting it. His shot is high. Dryden is still down. His mask is in behind him. That was a wicked shot. On the right side, Trombley takes a shot. Blocked by Palmatier. Now Dryden trying to get his mask on. Here's Savard shooting it. And it went off Turnbull. McDonald up on the right side. He has Williams with him. A hard, long drive. Dryden got his glove out there. Williams went after Engblom. Here's Turnbull chopping a shot. Rebound goes to Savard. He was bumped by Williams. It's cleared down into Toronto territory. Back after it is Hutchison. Rise brow ahead to Lafleur. Here's Lafleur breaking it on goal over to Gainey going in a goal, and he lost it. He couldn't make contact, and it rolled into Paul Matier. Now well, we've had close chances at both ends of the rink. Danny, do you remember the last time Kent Dryden lost his mask in Boston in the deciding game two years ago? But here comes Lafleur setting up Gainey on the return rush. Ganey never did get control of the puck, Jerry. No, Paul Matier again makes a heck of a play with his stick as Ganey was trying to either pull it by him or flip the puck over him. We'll get another look. Now there's where Dryden loses the mask. There, Danny, see, you can, I told you he shaved his mustache off. <laughs> that was a shot by Ron Allison. He could fire it too, but I wouldn't want to be Dryden in there without the mask on after playing with it for so many years. I remember that goal that Boston scored. It was in the, the fourth game in 70. Seven, and he lost the mask, and they scored on the play. That was the year they won the Stanley That's Cup right. in overtime the on the Lemaire goal. Here's Lafleur centering it. McDonald clearing it to Boutet. Boutet coming down with McDonald. They hit the Montreal line. Boutet going in against Robinson. Lemaire rolled it into the center ice area. Montreal five, Toronto two. Here's Lafleur. Lafleur back at the line gives it to Lemaire. The shot. Palmatier clearing it back. Lemaire has it going over the line. Robinson to LaPointe. Now Robinson on the left side comes to center. Robinson having a big night offensively. 
How many points has he, Dick? Three. Three assists. McDonald was upended by Robinson. That looked like a penalty, but I guess the referee didn't see it. Now on the right side at center. It's off Salming stick to the Leafs bench. With the score, the Canadians five, the Maple Leafs two. This is Stanley Cup 79. Before Noel Coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. I chose to incorporate exercise and healthy eating as part of my everyday life. And I've been making some changes to avoid getting bored. I'm taking yoga, a spin class, and I'm working towards a 5K run. Being able to play with my son as much as he wants really keeps me motivated. I feel stronger and healthier, and I'm on my way to wearing any swimsuit I want. I'm Jonia, and my participation is keeping things fresh. When a kid comes to our camp, they discover a lot about themselves. And what they learn here will stick with them for the rest of their lives. On Wednesday, June 3rd, Camp Day, buy a coffee and set things in motion. Help send a kid to camp. Tim Horton Children's Foundation, where kids discover their best. Shots on goal at this point of the game. Canadians ahead 32-25, 7.06 left in regulation time. Guess we should get used to saying that, Danny, in the playoffs. That is right, Dick. 5-2 to the score, seven minutes exactly left in regulation now. Here's Kenville. Kenville coming up on the right side. Napier cleared it back in. Chartra, Napier, and Risebrow doing the forward checking for the Canadians. Their strategy, of course, try and tie up the Leafs before they can get their offense into operation. Here's Gardner into Canadians' territory. Gardner around the net. He was tripped by Engblom. There's a shot from the short side. Blocked off the stick of Maloney. A lead pass. Rolls into Toronto territory. Napier trying to come up with it. Face off will be outside of the line. It went off the stick over the glass in the corner. A reminder here that our coverage of this quarterfinal series between the Maple Leafs and the Canadians continues Wednesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, with Game 2 played at the Forum here in Montreal. And remember that Games 3 and 4 will be at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto next Saturday and Sunday nights. But Game 2, Wednesday, from the Forum. Here's Turnbull at the line, lost it, falling. It's cleared out by Tremblay. Lemaire coming down over the line. Again, good back-checking by Anderson, and there the rookie goes, coming back. In along the boards. Anderson has been very impressive, particularly with his back checking and his skating in it here in the third period. Lambert is in over the Toronto line. Lambert around the net, trying to center it. Back it comes in front. Lemaire couldn't get it. Finally up on the right side. Ellis ahead to Sittler. He winds up. Oh, what a scintillating save by Dryden with that left glove hand. Tremendous shot. Right in front of Lambert. Rolled off his stick. Palmatier did not like the way Trombley went in on top of him after Palmatier had squeezed that buck between his pads. And Palmatier broke his stick in the process. Or vice versa. So now we get Trombley and Palmatier exchanging unpleasantries from long range. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance 
Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Go here, Jerry Kenny Dryden made his best save of the night off Sittler right there. A fantastic save by Dryden. And Roger Nielsen has got Gardner out there playing now. He's got to go with his goal scorers. But it's a real tough position for Gardner to be in. Now well, there's the chance for Lambert. He goes by. Palmatier makes the save. Trombley skates by. The puck underneath him. Zingo. There goes the goal <laughs> stick. 6-2 <laughs> now. The Islanders leading Chicago. Bossy again and Denny Potvat in the third period. And with eight minutes to go at the Spectrum, the Rangers still ahead of the Flyers. Danny, two to one. Leaves into the center ice area. Maloney clearing it all over the line. Robinson up on the left side for Ganey. He goes down with Risebra and Chartra. Chartra cutting in from the right side. Maloney against Risebra. Here is Salming. Salming coming up. Gives it to Maloney on the left side over the line to McKechnie. And that uh, rush is wiped out with the offside. I don't know if we reported all of those goals from the island, but Boyk Bossy has a hat trick. Will he ever stop? Yes, right after the ad hockey season ends. <laughs> he is just an incredible story. There's Dougie Reisbrow. We asked him before the game if he thought the Canadians could adjust if the Leafs tried to turn it into a tight-checking rough series. Uh, certainly, we know that Toronto's a close checking team, but uh, we've also uh, won the Vesna Trophy on checking too, and we feel that we can match them in uh, checking and hopefully outmatch them in that skating. Now, Ganey rolled it down on the left side. It, it went up, I think, and hit a fan and then dropped back was into the fan's hand, I think, for a fraction of a second. So less than five minutes left now in regulation time of this opening game of a best in seven quarter final series. Scotty Bowman, who did not look happy at the end of the first. He doesn't look happy right now, as a matter of fact. But the Leafs were the masters in the early part of the hockey game, opening up that two to nothing lead. But right now the Canadians are in front five to two. There's McDonald bumping with Robinson to the point. Cleared it out over the line. McKechnie, he gloved it ahead. The Canadian player Risebrow, but it was a Toronto player who picked it up, so there was no whistle. Robinson into the center ice area to Risebrow. Coming down with Ganey. Over the line. Shot away wide. Salming into the corner for Maloney. Maloney passing it out. It's Broken up, stopped by Lafleur. Now a pass intercepted by Lemaire over for Lafleur. He couldn't negotiate contact, and Burroughs and Lafleur in on the boards with 4:16 left. Well, Jerry Pender, we don't want to be right this issue, but you called it. The Leafs had their game plan against Guy Lafleur and the Canadians, and they started out with it. It worked well. They had the two nothing lead in the second period, but it seemed that right at that point, as soon as they got ahead two nothing, they abandoned the the rough play, if not rough, but the physical type play. They did in the, yes, in the second period. I don't know why they abandoned it. It could possibly be because Montreal has started to really move. And once Montreal starts flying, they're very difficult to catch. And this has caused Toronto the problem now, and this is why they're down 5-2. to two. But they're going to come back the next game, and they're going to start to play the game physical again. Lemaire upended by Gardner. Here's Gardner, a neat pass on the right side to Boutet. Boutet over the line. He lost it. Shut. Pass goes to the open wing. Lemire was skating over to the left side from the right. Now Turnbull. Pass to Hutchison. Lafleur was upended. 
Hutchison starting out. Lafleur is on it, and he cleared it back in. Three minutes and 43 seconds left in regulation time, and this the third period. Five to two. Now the buck is down into Canadians territory. Savard touches it, and that's icing against the Leafs. Lining up for the face-off to the right of Paul Matier. Time becoming a huge factor now for Toronto. They need three goals to get back in even terms with three minutes and 25 seconds left. Now it's Sittler coming down with Ellis and Anderson. Bromley cleared it out over the line. Hutchison, he shoots it in and a wave of Leafs moving in. Ellis, Anderson, Sittler. Turnbull has it at the point. Around the net. Into the corner. Ellis shooting it. Mondu clearing it to the far side. Turnbull is going to keep it in. Not for long, however. Out it comes. It's back in there. Called on the offside. We haven't mentioned very much about Larry Robinson tonight, but he hasn't made a mistake out in the ice, and he's been very solid offensively as well as defensively. And in early going in the first period when he had to move up and be a little physical with the Toronto Maple Leafs, he was. And this is what they depend on Larry Robinson for. He's, he's a real team leader for the Montreal Canadiens. So don't forget on Thursday on CBC TV, we'll have the Expos and the Blue Jays in a return match in Toronto for the Pearson Cup. It should be an outstanding attraction. Just as we mentioned earlier, Expos and Blue Jays going very, very well. Expos won today two to nothing, and Bill Lee pitched a two-header. I haven't heard about the Blue Jays, whether or not they have played tonight. I know one thing, the Leafs and the Canadians have been playing since around 8 o'clock. They're down to 2 minutes and 47 seconds left in the third period. Here is Hutchison drilling a shot off the corner boards. Anderson in there, bumping rather gently with Savard. Canadians clearing it out over the line. Lambert, Trombley has it. He winds up over. Lambert going in. He was being checked effectively by Ellis. Lambert poking away, and he couldn't come up with it from the corner. You have to give a lot of credit to Jacques Lemaire as well, the Montreal Canadiens. He's always been a great playoff performer. He was the one that beat us in Chicago back in 1971 or two, I believe, in the seventh game of the Stanley Cup when he blasted a shot from just inside the red line, right over Tony Esposito's shoulder. Well, that you were leading two to nothing in that game, and you could have won the uh, Stanley Cup had uh, you held on to that or any part of it. And then Pocket Richard got two goals. Got two goals. Yeah, that was the closest I got to the Stanley Cup, Danny. That was an amazing year for the Montreal Canadiens. They upset the power pack Bruins. And they lost the first game against the Bruins. And they were down at one stage in the second period, 5-1. to one, Won that one 7-5 and never looked back. Now Salming bumping with Chartra into the corner. Here's Ganey. He stopped in his tracks by Maloney. McKechnie. Salming up to McDonald. McDonald winds up 10 feet wide with that shot. Now at the point, Burroughs a shot right on, and Dryden goes down. He had to be quick on that low shot from the point. 2.04 left in the third period. Every time Lanny McDonald's been on the ice this period, Scotty Bowman's had Bob Ganey opposite him. And if you want, it, want anyone to check Lanny McDonald in, the, in a close game, especially in the playoffs, Bob Ganey has to be the guy. 5-2, Montreal leading. Savard from the side of the net. And ahead to Ganey. Ganey coming out rather gingerly on the left side. He's in over the Toronto line. Fired nowhere near the net. Chartra clearing it back in. In behind the net. Burroughs leading a four-man Toronto attack. McDonald comes to center. Shoots it in. Canadians in there to take over. Savard. His pass goes into the center ice area. And now, a minute and a half left, and there's an offside against the Leafs. You see Paul Gardner out in the ice again, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, Roger Nielsen has to go with his scores. Uh, there's only a minute and 31 left, so I wouldn't give the Leafs much of a chance. But as I mentioned before, I think the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to come out again in the second game here in Montreal, and I think they're going to try and be physical. 
They feel that they can win this way. I don't think the defeat is going to, they're not going to mope around about it. They're going to get together, talk it over, and they'll come out hitting again Wednesday night and hopefully get a few breaks. Well, why did they cut it off tonight? They uh, were hitting effectively, took the lead, and then the Canadians took over. Here's Kenville in over the line, making the move against Robinson, who jammed him in on the boards. Gardner centered it, and it went off the stick of shot. Down the ice it goes. It is Butler touching it, and that is a nice thing. Shut didn't intend it that way, but not always what you intend. Results. I've got to believe that uh, part of the reason why the Toronto Maple Leafs were unable to continue the physical game that they had started was the speed of the Montreal Canadiens. So you're going to see, uh, this will be Robinson taking Kenville. I think that's Kenville, as I recall. Yeah, he's taking the body out of him as he's done so effectively the whole game. He's an impressive young defenseman for Toronto, Kenville. Very impressive. Leaves everybody up. Turnbull and Hutchinson on the line. Robinson being chased by Gardner. Here's Robinson out over the line. Into the center ice area. Robinson making the move, going in on goal. Turnbull upends Robinson. He's going off that pass, came back out through the crease. And there you have the patented great rush by Robinson. Larry Robinson makes a great play. There's not much doubt about the penalty call here. We're going to get a replay. And even after Larry Robinson was hauled down, watch this rush from behind his net. But you're going to see after he was hauled down, he makes a heck of a play to fire the puck right through the goal crease. And had anybody in Montreal been there, there he's being hauled down by Turnbull. Now watch him get the puck as he's down and fire it through the crease. Follows penalty to number two, Ian Turnbull. Two minutes for hooking at 18.59. 18.59 for Turnbull, his fourth minor of the night. Remember last year, he was the top scorer for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He had six goals and 11 assists in the playoffs. Oh, he's a very valuable playoff performer. Now here's the point. The point in for Lombard, hopped over his stick into the corner, Tremblay. Hutchinson fell, trying to check Tremblay. The Leafs clear it down the ice. Montreal 5, Toronto 2, 40 seconds left in the third period of the Canadians, led by Risebrough, Trombley, and Lambert. Over the line, back to Risebrough. He shoots it, and he shot it wide. He got in behind the defenseman on that. Butler clearing it down the ice. Butler down there to check LaPointe. Next game in this series here at the Forum, 8 o'clock, Wednesday night, in Toronto, the third and fourth games, Saturday and Sunday. And the Canadians with 10 seconds left. You can say now they have taken the one game lead in the series. Hutchison in behind the net. And that will be the uh, hockey game. So the Montreal Canadiens, after getting behind two to nothing, retaliate with five goals. They outshoot Toronto 33 to 28. And they win the first game of this series. In just a moment, our three-star selection. Before Noel Coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. 
and you invest it with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. Mesdames, Messieurs, voici les trois étoiles Molson du match de ce soir, tel que choisi par Monsieur Bertrand Raymond du Journal de Montréal. Here are the Molson's three stars of tonight's game, as selected by Mr. Bertrand Raymond of the Journal de Montréal. La première étoile, the first star, Jacques Lebel. La deuxième étoile, the second star, Guy Lafleur. Et la troisième étoile, the third star, Larry Robinson. We will return with Stanley Cup 79 in just a moment. Lemaire with a pair of goals, Yvonne Lambert with the single tally, and the Montreal Canadiens skate to a 5-2 win over the Toronto Maple Leafs in Game 1 of the Stanley Cup quarterfinals. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. When a kid comes to our camp, they discover a lot about themselves. And what they learn here will stick with them for the rest of their lives. On Wednesday, June 3rd, Camp Day, buy a coffee and set things in motion. Help send a kid to camp. Tim Horton Children's Foundation, where kids discover their best. Pride, excitement, style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Canadians will go on to win this series and then a memorable many men on the ice against Boston. Really that was the, uh, uh, I think both uh, us and, and the Bruins knew that that was going to be the Stanley Cup because the Bruins had, the, had a great team. Uh, unfortunately for Boston, fortunate for us, game seven, uh, with too many men on the ice and it wasn't, wasn't one player, it was uh, two or three players that jumped on the ice all together and it was, a, it was just a classic uh, line change mess up. And uh, Lafleur scored the uh, scored the goal and put us in the finals. And you win your fourth consecutive Stanley Cup by beating uh, the New York Rangers. And uh, this team goes down in history as one of the greats of all time. Uh, what are you up to these days, Mr. Shot? With the company called uh, Simcoe Refrigeration, uh, we do all of the refrigeration for ice surfaces. We've done probably 20 of the last 22 NHL buildings plus most of the rinks that you were bringing your kids to. All right. Well, thank you very much. We want to thank you for coming and joining us and uh, shedding a little different light on a, a game with uh, Leafs TV with this series. Nice to go back in history. Yes, it is. Steve Schott has been our guest. We took him back to April 16, 1979, as the Canadians beat the Maple Leafs by a score of 5-2 to two in Game 1. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. This portion of Leafs TV is brought to you by Rogers Cable. Hi, this is Chuck Storm. I'm live at the scene where last night there was a robbery at about 3.30 in the morning. Now, police have heard... Oh, uh... Before, no coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> 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 
No coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30, Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leeds TV. It's a Canadian game. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. <laughs> 